Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend, the Saiyan Fanfix, back with amazing fanfiction. This is the series of, what if Deku summon heroic spirits? Now before starting, please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. A 14-year-old Izuku Midoriya woke up like any other day. However, today would change his life forever, even more so than his chance meeting with All Might. He looked up seeing an ethereal blue message box in front of his eyes. The box read, Hello young master, I am an aspect of your new quirk, the throne of heroes. It's a pleasure to meet you the word said. A female voice appearing in the young man's head as he read them. It took a while for the information to hit him but when it did his eyes shot open in an instant. Oh great, I played for so long last night that now I'm hallucinating. This was a new one, although not very surprising considering his hobbies. He always loved video games, especially RPGs based on battle, mostly because it let him take the reins of a hero, something his former quirklessness would probably never allow. Even after inheriting one for all, he didn't have the heart to just give up the hobby outright. While your reaction is understandable, this is not a hallucination. I am an autonomous, artificial intelligence created to help you have a better understanding of your new quirk. While it may be true that this quirk is not natural to you, like the one that the Johnny Bravo lookalike gave you, it is yours nonetheless. The screen changed as he read the message. Now instead of a text box, he saw three different white boxes. The first had a symbol that looked like a Roman cross with a circle in the middle colored in blue. Under the box, there was the word summoning the second had a symbol that looked like two pyramids inside each other one pointed upward and the other pointed downwards. This box had the word shop written under it. Finally, the last box had a symbol shaped like two hands holding each other. This one had the word friend written underneath it. This is way too realistic, not to mention self-aware, to be a hallucination. And if someone had enough free time and the right quirk to pull a prank on me, then they certainly wouldn't know about one for all. Izuku rationalized. He focused on the friend tab and the screen changed again. This time showing a section of rows, only two of which were filled in. The first had a portrait of Bakugu and his name written right next to it, likewise with the second except it was of Inko. This is the friend screen. Here you can see the information regarding those that consider you to be a friend and vice versa. Friends appear automatically once you have met the prerequisites needed to be considered their friend. You can see the status of your friends by focusing on their icons mentally. It can't hurt to try Izuku thought as he focused on Bakugu's portrait. The moment he did this a profile appeared with information on his friend's status, including his mental state, his physical condition, and even his location. This alone is incredible, having such detailed information on someone so easily available. What about the other two boxes? As he thought this the screen went back to the original three boxes. This time he focused on the summon tab and the screen changed again. This screen had the portraits of several people that Izuku didn't recognize. Under these portraits were two buttons. The first said single summon while the second said 10x summon. A gacha game, my quirk is a fucking gacha game. Izuku said with a twitching eyebrow, he usually wouldn't curse but come on. With a situation this ridiculous, he probably deserved to be cut some slack. Welcome to the summon tab. Here you will exchange saints quartz, summon tickets, and friend points to summon various helpful items, powers, and even servants. Servants, like actual people, or maybe something like ectoplasm's quirk. Izuku thought in confusion. Servants are powerful creatures that can be summoned by a variety of means, your quirk being one of them. Each servant is a copy of a legendary figure from history called from the throne of heroes to fight on your behalf. Being such as the Minotaur, Medusa, King Arthur, and even demigods like Heracles can be summoned here. I don't know what to say to that. Also saints quartz, summon tickets, what are those? And how is the Minotaur considered a hero? Or Medusa for that matter? Those two in particular didn't exactly scream hero to him. The definition of hero is rather flexible. As for your first question, they are all different resources used for summoning. Saints Quartz are both the rarest and the most common. Three Saints Quartz are needed for a 1x summon and 30 for a 10x summon. The AI explained, showing him a picture of what one of these looked like. They can only be obtained through three methods. The first being the hardest. By completing various important hidden quests that are created as life goes on you will be given a Saint Quartz each. Hidden quests, so unlike a game, I won't be made aware of them. I guess an example of an important quest would be becoming a hero or getting into a good hero school. Izuku reasoned. Correct. In fact, you've already completed quite a few quests. I'll give you your rewards after the tutorial is completed so don't worry about that. A winking emoticon appeared in the text box. Well that's nice to know. The second method is much simpler. Every day you will receive a free Saint Quartz, at the end of each week, you will receive two instead. Each birthday you will receive an allowance of 60 free Quartz to use as you please. The third and final method is what makes them the most common. You can buy them outright using real money with the shop option. The AI explained as Izuku absorbed the information. 
Additionally, Saint Quartz can be used as healing items. Consuming one can completely reset your stamina, or it can bring every member of your summon party back to full health and power instantly. Next are the summon tickets. They can be earned through the first two methods. You will either receive a single Saint's Quartz or a summon ticket daily. They can be earned through quests as well, and they allow you a free 1x summon. Finally, there are friend points. These accumulate daily. For each friend that you have you will receive 200 friend points each. These points can be used for friend point summons. Friend point summons can only be done with friend points. Additionally, they provide a limited number and variety of items compared to the regular summons. A quick list of possible drops showed up before quickly disappearing behind a newly formed info tab on the bottom left of the screen. You get one free 10x friend point summon every day. Each 1x summon costs 200 friend points and every 10x summon costs 2000 the AI finished explaining. By the way master, you can speak to me through your thoughts. This system was designed to maximize convenience. The voice finished his, her explanation. I think I understand so far. This really is a unique quirk. Who gave it to me? And what do I call you? Izuku asked the voice. She appeared to be benevolent so far, so he hoped that she could give him some answers. Uh, how rude of me, you may call me Mashu. I was sent here by Alea. They are the manifestation of humanity itself. And as you probably know, one of humanity's greatest motivators is boredom. And as the manifestation of all of humanity, Alea's boredom is legendary. To cure this boredom they have gifted you this quirk. The newly named Mash explained, shocking Izuku further that such a powerful being would take interest in him. But why me of all people? Shouldn't this kind of power go to a hero like All Might? Izuku asked, not understanding why. The quirk was supposed to go towards the person who was the least likely to harm humanity with it, along with being the most likely to use it for humanity's benefit. You were that person, that makes you an official part of the counter force. Congratulations Master Izuku. Izuku blushed at this finally realizing that Mash has been calling him Master this whole time. Can you please not call me Master? It kinda feels weird, besides I'm not above anyone, including you. Izuku requested, to Mash's surprise. Very well Izuku-kun, thank you for treating me as an equal. Most people wouldn't give me the light of day since I'm not real. She replied with a thankful tone. Of course, regardless of whether you were born naturally or made artificially, a person is still a person and deserves respect, Izuku said resolutely. Anyway we should get back to the tutorial. As a start you will be given a free 10x summon. It will give you a guaranteed rare servant along with the chance to obtain more if you're lucky enough. Please roll now so that we can continue. Mash continued, hoping that her new host didn't notice the stutter. Izuku did as he was asked. When he mentally pressed the button there were several flashes of light with cards appearing on the screen. Some had people in them, and the rest had items. By the end of it, he had ten cards displayed in order of appearance, some were gold while others were silver. Here are your new summons Izuku-kun, allow me to explain them to you. Detailed descriptions are available to you but I'll give you a short summary of each for the sake of time. May I say you are quite lucky with your first summon, this many gold items are very rare. And acquiring two golden servants in your first roll is particularly impressive. The chances of that are in the single digit. Mash exclaimed energetically before going back to her explanation. I will start with the silver cards. They are of the three-star rank. And the least valuable of the cards that you can get from the regular summons. She explained as she went over the card with what looked like a magic symbol on it. This first card is the craft essence called Hydra Dagger. A poison blade with a coating of venom extracted from a young hydra. Said poison causes excruciating pain upon entering the body and is oftentimes lethal. Used with extreme caution. Okay, Izuku wasn't even going to touch that. He really hoped there was a way to sell these things or something. There is don't worry about that Izuku-kun. Some of these items are indeed a little much so don't feel obligated to use them if you don't want to. Good, very good. He really wouldn't want to use something like that. It sounded positively villainous. Next is the Mystic Code Motored Corasir. A large motorcycle, armed with the magical energy converted from the King of Knights. Simply put, it's an amazing vehicle that surpasses all of its contemporaries in sheer speed. Another item Izuku couldn't really use, though he wouldn't lie he'd probably keep it for how cool it looked alone. Your next card is, oh my, it's a love potion. Let me explain. It's essentially a real version of those pheromone perfumes you see on online ads. Dab this on yourself and you'll experience a temporary boost to your looks and overall likability with the opposite sex. Alternatively, you could drink it and obtain a lesser, yet permanent bonus instead. Have fun with that. I must not give in to temptation. 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 Izuku gave in to temptation almost instantly, grabbing the card with his hands which caused a potion to appear within them which he downed immediately, blushing the entire time. Hum, cherries. It tasted good. The flavor and what it meant for him as a person. I can't say I didn't expect that. 
Not that you needed a potion to get girls to like you. Just have some confidence in yourself Izuku-kun. You're plenty cute enough as is. Izuku's blush multiplied in intensity while Mash continued with the rest of the cards since they didn't have much time. Next is your first gold card, the Holy Shroud of Magdalene. A shroud that once worn protects you from the attacks of any male, quartering their effectiveness. It also passively exudes a holy aura that calms the faithful, Mash explained. The next one quickly since it was rather simple. The final craft essence is rather special. Instead of giving you an item it gives you the knowledge on how to perform formal craft, a type of magic which uses the earth itself to supply the energy rather than a person's own reserves, of which you have none so it's doubly useful for you. That sounded incredibly useful, and painful. How are they going to cram so much information in so little time? The information will be introduced gradually over the course of five years so don't expect to be a master overnight. It can also be studied via meditation for quicker results but again, don't expect a miracle. As she finished explaining information slowly started to be streamed into Izuku's head, slowly enough that it wouldn't bother him in his daily life but still noticeable when he focused on it. Finally, we can get on to your first servant. The three-star rider, Alexander, king of Macedonia. His stats and what they mean can be found in the detailed description on his card. But before that, I need to explain just how servant cards work with your quirk. Izuku listened closely, only having enough time to slightly gush over having such a famous figure in his collection. Servant cards can be used in three ways. The first is the most basic, noble phantasm, include. This allows you to use the most powerful weapon, ability of each servant on its own. Next is the ability of Servant Merger, Install, which installs the abilities, techniques, and even combat knowledge of the servant into your own body. However, only about half of the servant's true power is transferred over. So far so good. And all in all it sounded amazing already, though Mash's voice took a more serious tone for the third option. Finally, there's the full summoning option which summons the servant to your world in their full glory. This option has the potential to be extremely dangerous since not all servants will take kindly to being ordered around. Izuku nodded, it made, especially if figures like legendary kings or even anti-heroes were to make their appearance. Prideful or outright malevolent beings like that wouldn't take orders lying down. To help circumvent this we have provided you with three command seals. They can be used to order your servant to perform any action once per use without question. However, you only receive one command seal per day so use them wisely. They can also be used to heal or power up your servants but the latter is temporary so it is suggested not to rely on it. Another amazing feature and a necessary one from what Izuku could see, he'd take that advice to heart. As for Alexander, as a rider-class servant his specialty is in movement speed and his powerful noble phantasm. Bucephalus, a large dark horse that with the strength and ferocity of 50 men, it can easily match up to modern-day military vehicles in terms of strength while being significantly more maneuverable. He's a good boy when you get to know him. A horse. It was. Strange but he could see the use in it. Wow, this quirk was gonna turn heads when Izuku revealed it. Indeed. Now, on to the next servant, Ushiwakamaru, a name you may know from history class. Wasn't he supposed to be a man? Izuku thought to himself while blushing profusely at this servant's clothing, or lack thereof. History isn't always accurate. She is also a rider class servant so you already know her specialties. As for her noble phantasm, it is Dan no Yurahasu Tobai a powerful secret technique which temporarily raises your agility and speed to the levels of the original servant, effectively doubling it for a few seconds. An incredibly useful ability. Though limited in its usage Izuku could easily see the benefit of having a way to double his speed out of nowhere. Your final silver servant is Castor Mephistopheles. Thankfully history was wrong about this one too. He's not a demon, just an artificially created human. A word of advice, please don't summon him, he's like five levels of crazy and all of them are lethal. No need to tell him twice, the guy frankly looked terrifying anyway. As a caster, he focuses on ranged damage dealing and a fast charging noble phantasm. Said NP is called TikTok Bomb, a series of small, spider-like explosive devices that crawl on their own towards a chosen target, detonating once they clasp onto said target dealing a moderate amount of damage and leaving the opponent curse, not to be used against squishy targets I imagine, but great for durable opponents or for demolition. And if it's fast charging Izuku guessed that it can be used rather quickly one after the other. Finally, we've arrived at the Golden Servants. These are rather rare only having a drop rate of about 4%, though one is guaranteed with each 10x sum, the first of which is Fionn Mac Cumhale, a lancer which focuses mainly on short-range combat speed and perception. His NP lets him gather surrounding water vapor to the tip of his spear and then shoot it in a straight line like an industrial water jet. You can imagine the results. No kidding. An attack like that could shred through steel easily. Definitely not something to be underestimated. The final card you summoned is the Archer Servant, which as you can imagine focus on long-distance combat. 
though not necessarily with a bow and arrow. Any ranged weaponry can count. This specific hero is a bit unique though. He is also a counter guardian. CGMU to be specific, his noble phantasm is rather special and permanently affects the mental state of the caster so using it for yourself has been locked away. Sorry about that. Izuku was surprised and a little disappointed to hear that, but if this servant's power could permanently alter his mind, he could live without it. As a consolation prize you are to be given his five most commonly used weapons instead. The Black Bow, Kanshu and Bakuya, Kalidbulg 2, Row Eyes, and Hunting. You may check out each individual NP at your leisure later on. And he totally would. Izuku even recognized a few of those names from old legends and was surprised that a single hero had so many NPs. Just who was this Emiya guy anyway? That's all for now Izuku-kun. It's about time for you to start the day. If you even need to talk to me just think my name with intent and I'll respond. Have a nice day. And don't forget to check out your starting sum of quartz later in the summoning section. And with that the screens vanished. Izuku just stood there, processing what had just happened. Or at least he tried to until his mother called out to him before he had a chance to think. Izuku-kun wake up. You don't want to be late for the entrance exams right? Came the voice of his mother, the most important person in his life. Right I should get going. I'll tell her about my new quirk later. It's going to take time for me to be able to explain it. He thought as he made his way to the kitchen after doing his daily rituals. Inko was waiting there with breakfast and a smile. Good morning, Izuku-kun. I hope you slept well. Today is a big day after all. Inko reminded him while setting up the table. Before Izuku sat down he gave her a morning hug as a greeting then began to dig into his breakfast. By the way how is the training going? You've grown so much in just a short 10 months. I'm so proud. The mother exclaimed in happiness for her son's new resolve. It's been going really well. Yagi-sensei has done so much for me. I just hope that I can repay him eventually. Oh, I almost forgot. After the test today I need to tell you something. But it's complicated so I have to wait until later. Inko looked confused but accepted it. Okay Izuku-kun, I trust you. Just have a nice day and we'll talk later. With that Izuku finished eating breakfast and went off to catch the train. Let's hope some of those NPs can help me out during the exams. I don't think I'm gonna be able to rely on one for all any time soon. He thought, remembering his broken arm from yesterday. Okay, note to self, read all servant descriptions before attempting to use their cards. No matter what. Side note, casters are fucking psychopaths. Izuku thought to himself as he looked through the bios of his new cards that he recently summoned. Much had happened in the short period of time between him activating his quirk and arriving at UA. For one he checked out the starting SQ that he had available, which came with a handy breakdown of where everything came from. For waiting an extra 10 years to get a quirk, plus 50. For consistently scoring high in academics, plus 5. For creating over 10 notebooks filled with weapons grade knowledge on heroes, plus 5. For surviving an encounter with a villain, plus 10. You met All Might, plus 1. He signed your notebook, plus 1. You discovered one of the world's great mysteries 2x, plus 20. You've been mentored by All Might, plus 30. You've fully cleaned Dagaba Beach, plus 10. You've eaten the hair, plus 60. You've used OFA for the first time, plus 5. For completing the tutorial, plus 10. And that was about it, which left Izuku with a total of 207 SQ, which he thought to be a significant amount until he checked the shop tag, less than 20,000 yen. All those quests amounted to less than 20,000 yen worth of saint's quartz, sad realities of capitalism aside. Izuku decided to roll a few more times in order to give himself an edge in versatility, hoping that it would be enough to cover for his inexperience and an ability to use OFA without breaking his body. He pulled only once though, a 10x summon specifically and wrote down his thoughts on each of them in a new notebook. The summoning gave him the following. Craft Essences Freelancer Jeweled Sword Zelak Room Garter Servants Alexander Fergus Mac Roach, Hazuin Inchen, Kuchulain, Hassan of 100 Faces, The Diver, Altria Pendragon. The fact that one of the most mythical kings in history was actually a woman really shouldn't have surprised him considering what Mash said, but it definitely caught him off guard, so much so that he didn't even notice Kakan pass him by, or that he tripped on his own two feet. Hell he barely even noticed that his feet were now floating off the ground wait what? Freaking out slightly Izuku kicked his feet a bit trying to get down only to hear the giggling of someone right next to him. Sorry about using my quirk on you without asking, but I doubt you'd want to eat pavement right before the exam. A frankly adorable girl said, a smile on her face and eyes closed as she deactivated her quirk. T thank you. I just realized something earlier and it distracted me. And my name is Midoriya by the way. Midoriya Izuku. Izuku returned the smile, still a little nervous about talking to such a pretty girl but didn't want to come off as rude by not saying anything. Nice to meet you. I'm Yuraka Achako. I'd love to chat but we should probably get going. The tests will start soon. She said before heading off. 
She was right of course the test started soon and it would be for the best to get in early. Several hours of standardized testing later. Smack. Was the sound Izuku's head made as it collided with the table he was sitting for the last few hours. He wasn't alone in this either as numerous students smashed their faces onto their respective desks, united in the hatred of all things paperwork, a hatred that would surely follow them into adulthood, causing them to wish such pain to be placed upon the young, perpetuating the cycle. It wasn't long until present Mike of all people arrived to explain what the practical portion of the exam entail. We're gonna be fighting robots. Score. Collateral damage doesn't seem to be a concern either so as long as he wasn't near too many other people he could use some of his stronger NPs. Just imagining what an activated Kalidbog would do to an army of machines was getting Izuku excited. The hell are you so happy about Deku? Are you that ready to commit suicide via robot? Kakan griped from the seat next to him, probably annoyed by Izuku's excitement and general happiness. So business as usual really. And no sorry about that. I was probably being too loud. Ah, uh, that's right I forgot to tell you. I Izuku was about to tell him about having a quirk now but was interrupted. And you too with the unkempt hair. Well that was rude. You've been talking this entire time, it's distracting. If you aren't going to take this seriously then leave was as far as the guy got before Kakan exploded. Thankfully not literally. Shut the fuck up you pompous extra. If anyone's distracting everyone it's the dipshit that can't even read their own instructions for a simple test like everyone else. If you need your hand held through everything then you're the one that doesn't belong here. Brutal with his words as ever Kakan had effectively cowed whoever he was yelling at before present Mike called for order. From there the students were each moved to their respective areas. On the way to the bus that would bring the students to their testing area, Izuku saw a familiar face. Yuraka was about to enter one of the buses when he decided to head over, wanting to wish her luck and maybe talk for a bit before the exam. Yuraka san it's nice to see you again. So, giant robots right. The lovable cinnamon roll bumbled into a conversation. Guess love potion doesn't instantly cure social ineptitude. Luckily she didn't notice or didn't care about how nervous he was and gave him another bright smile. I know right. I mean, it makes sense I guess. Heroes are always fighting things at that level so we're expected to do it too. My zero gravity is nice and all but I'm not sure how well I'll do against that kind of enemy. Wow, okay she's effectively the opposite of him when it came to conversations huh? I don't think so. If anything your quirk is one of the best for fighting mechanical opponents. Oh the potential. And depending on its limitations it could be the best weapon against machines, even compared to electric quirks. Think about it. If they have no gravity then their internal components will go all over the place. Plus something that heavy falling from anything higher than a few meters is almost guaranteed to break them. Izuku exclaimed, growing excited over the applications and effectiveness of quirks, though thankfully he didn't descend into a mutter-fueled episode for once. W wow, you really put a lot of thought into it. Everyone's always told me that my quirk was better off being used for rescue missions and stuff like that but now that you mention it, though, sorry I spaced out there for a second. What about you? What's your quirk? She awkwardly rebounded the question, blushing slightly. See cute. W wait no, focus. Izuku thought. Ah, that's a bit difficult to explain. The simplest way I can describe it is that I can summon various things to help me. It's vague I know but my quirk is honestly all over the place. Here I'll show you. Taking out Emiya's servant card and activating its include function. His iconic weapons appeared in Izuku's hands. Showing off Kanchu and Bakuya he explained some of their features. These blades for example are particularly good against non-human opponents. They're not very durable but I can summon more copies at will and they have a special feature that lets them return to the user so long as they hold one of the blades. Kinda like a magnet. Izuku ran his mouth before realizing that Yuraka was too busy staring at the blades to really listen. Uh, he said dumbly breaking her off of her staring contest with the swords. Oh oh, sorry about that. Those swords are just really beautiful. And those are just two of the weapons you can make. What else can Yoshi quickly regained her composure but their bus arrived before she could ask anything else. The students all headed off the bus and decided to split ways to prepare. Thankfully he didn't have to wait long for the exam to begin. Exam start. No countdown huh. Makes sense I guess. Izuku thought, immediately installing Emiya's card, which he decided to do ahead of time. Emiya may not be the strongest, or the fastest, or the most durable, or okay this is starting to turn into something less than flattering. The point is that the Red Archer was the most versatile and easy to use considering that his stats were the most evenly spread, not to mention his NP, all of them, 2 pointer on the right, 3 1 pointers on the left, medium distance, optimal response, throw Kanchu at the farther of the 2 1 pointers, rush the 2 pointer myself and cleave off the tail with Bakuya, using it to impale the robot. By this time Kanchu has impacted and cut off the head of the farthest one-pointer and is now heading towards the closer one, cutting off its head before it can attack me. Izuku pulled off the maneuver seamlessly before catching Kanchu and head off for a new target. 
Emiya has some serious fucking issues, but I can't deny the results. The part of Izuku's personality that hasn't turned into a 100% efficient machine of mass destruction thought as his body almost moved on its own in its robot-destroying carnage. Sooner or later Izuku ran into some less-than-lucky individuals who were being pushed back by the robot. I know this is supposed to be a realistic test but were the missiles really necessary? Izuku asked himself as he sent copies of hunting to intercept said explosives before they hurt or god forbid killed someone. I shall save everyone in front of me. Wait what? I mean, I don't disagree with that per se but, context please. Context never came. This continued for a decent amount of time. That was until Izuku felt the ground beneath his feet shake as in the sky above darkened. A mechanical monstrosity made itself known as it towered over the surrounding buildings. Holy shit it's the ancient gear golem. And just like that, someone had to ruin it. The robot didn't seem to take too kindly to being called a relic of the past, both in the context of the reference trading cards aesthetic and playability so it sent its own mechanized melee at whoever said that to make its ire known. Message received, don't call it old. I think this is about the right time to leave before something stupid happens. Oh well. Izuku heard a cry of pain coming from a downed Yuraka who was pinned to the ground by some rubble. Mission updated, protect at all costs. Optimal response, send the mountain buster. Summoning the black bow along with Khaled Bulk 2 Izuku's body moved on instinct. Knocking the sword turned arrow he aimed at the central mass of the incoming, and soon to be non-existent robot. I am the bone of my sword. Khaled Bulk. Izuku's voice boomed, not quite his own as he launched the drill sword, its magic twisting everything around it as it soared towards the metallic foe villain, and then through the metallic foe villain. As the machine crumpled up and exploded for some reason Izuku made his way towards Yuraka who was staring up at the falling zero pointer, clear shock on her face. Yuraka san are you okay? Did that thing who arc? Was the last thing Izuku said before his world went black. He really should have known that this kind of power would come with a price. That day, he dreamed of a hill of swords, and of a hero whose name was forgotten to time. Ooh, my head. Did anyone get the number of that truck? Izuku muttered, his splitting headache making itself known loud and clear as he woke up. I think the codename used for it was Executor, but that can be discussed later. Izuku heard a familiar, unfamiliar voice from his right. His eyes protested for a moment before giving in to his desire to open. Welcome back to the land of the living Midoriya Shounen. We have a lot to discuss. All Might said, giving his successor a stern look while the medic in the room did the same though she hid it better. For a start, can you explain the apparent dozens of quirks you've demonstrated during the earlier fight or the white hair? And silver eyes for that matter. Why? The what? Izuku. Emiya thought before looking in a nearby mirror, noticing the changes. Oh. Izuku disengaged the Emiya card and felt the difference immediately. My god that guy has issues. Note to self, if an install lasts for more than 4 hours you may have a problem. I have many things to explain, and half of it is going to make no sense so. I recommend you sit down. Izuku gave them a fair warning. One hour of trying to explain the concepts of heroic spirits, magecraft, and various other obtuse concepts to someone who knew nothing to start with. Midoriya Shounen. The fuck? That was fair. Izuku did just get through explaining some pretty high concept stuff. He thought, only to be interrupted by Mash and later his other new voice in his head. You think this is high concept? Just wait until you tell him about the moon. You be quiet about the moon. He may have problems here, but they are problems that he will ignore for the moment since there are more pressing issues to worry about. Speaking of which, language Tashinori Baka, recovery girl yelled before smacking him over the head with her cane. Right, the most dangerous person in the room had yet to be appeased. As much as I'd hate to admit it, magic seems to be a decent explanation for what we just saw. Honestly, it might be the only explanation. Quirks are amazing but even they have their limits. That being said I'm quite interested in studying the subject. Please tell me you haven't just created this world's first magus. Mash begged from within Izuku's mind. He had no answer for her. But that can wait. You're free to go, young man. Your parents must be worried sick it's been a few hours since you were knocked out after all. Oh, thank Alea. And she was right. Mom was probably causing the second great flood by now. I must go. My neighbors need me. If Izuku didn't show up in the next few hours he could only pray that there was something left to salvage. All Might, who knew his successor's mother at least tangentially understood and let him go, though the number one hero was still a little off from the information dump he just got. Wait a minute. I have an assassin servant. Speed and presence concealment. A perfect combination for quick travel while avoiding the risk of heroes stopping him for illegal quirk use, and quite possibly the only thing that could save those poor drowning neighbors. One quick change into the Hassan of the Hundred Faces later and Izuku had to ask himself, does power corrupt? Apparently the answer was yes, and rather quickly. Or maybe that was just Emiya's pragmatism talking. A little bit of both I imagine, you were in that four-star state for a while there. Mash acknowledged his concerns, and Izuku could certainly feel the difference between a four-star servant and a three-star one. 
The stress on his mind and body had lessened in comparison, leaving him much more focused than in the entrance exam, which had him in what amounted to an adrenaline-fueled robot murder frenzy, with the occasional savior complex-fueled rescue attempt. Wait is that my apartment building? I've been running for like... Two minute tops. Servants were scary. Then again this one had an ranked agility score so Izuku guessed it made sense. Thankfully his apartment wasn't flooded quite yet so he still had time. Rushing up to my door Izuku quickly disengaged his class card and walked inside saying Tadama. Please don't panic. A phrase that Izuku was sad to say was rather common in the Midoriya household. Izuku. What happened? Why were you out for so long? Why didn't you call? Did you dye your hair? She trailed off, starring at the left side of her son's head. Taking a strand of his own hair Izuku noticed that one of his curls was in fact silver rather than his natural green highlights. I can explain, Izuku said after taking a moment to process everything. Though it's going to take a while so we might as well talk over dinner. It would be nice to have a calm, ordinary dinner after a crazy day like today. Nearly two hours and three separate fainting spells later. Wait how big was the robot? And you did what to it? Right, Izuku probably shouldn't have gone into that much detail about the test itself. At least Inko wasn't dying at the thought of her son fighting it anymore. Izuku's little demonstration of a servant's strength eased her worries if only by a bit. This is all just so much. On one hand, I'm so proud of you honey. Not only did you get your quirk but you managed to do so well on your test right after. It's amazing and scary at the same time. She was honestly taking this better than Izuku had expected. And he hasn't even mentioned your Uraka yet. Thinking of her Izuku wondered how she was doing. From what he remembered she looked fine the last time he saw her. She probably just had a sprained ankle from how the rubble was holding her down or something. I wonder if she passed. Her quirk was pretty amazing so she has a good chance. And Kakan, how will he react to? All this, I'm a dead man dead men be we oh god is it becoming self-aware. The human brain has more than enough room for multiple personalities. Though yours is full of a bunch of insecurities and logical fallacies. Mind if I clean up? Izuku couldn't help but imagine an Emiya with a broom and dustpan when he said that. He just wanted today to be over. Several months of Izuku accepting his new reality later. A week into his new self-imposed quirk training Izuku received his results and was surprised to learn that he actually passed at the top of the class. Not only did you do quite well against those robots, but your show of heroism went above and beyond what was expected. Hell, half of the judges were angry at the fact that we could only give you 60 hero points at a time. Were All Might's exact words. Izuku also did rather well on the written portion too, in the top 10 in fact. As for his progress with the throne of heroes, it was slow going but results came nonetheless. Izuku could now hold a four-star servant card for a full hour before the mental pollution started to negatively affect him. Though that first install with Emiya was still haunting him to this day. Oh quiet you, don't even try to deny the fact that you rely on me half of the time. Fine fine, Emiya wasn't all bad. He was a sarcastic asshole most of the time but underneath all of that salt and nihilism was a very caring person and one hell of a house husband, something Inko took full advantage of, who knew that all you needed to lose a ton of weight was healthy food that actually tasted halfway decent. Halfway decent. That's not what I heard when I made you that katsudan a few days ago you in great. Moving on. Over the last few months, Izuku had used up the rest of his SQ, only saving seven of them since 1x summons were inefficient and the rest were better used in emergency situations as healing items. What did Izuku receive for his six consecutive 10x summons you may ask? Servants. Another Fergus. Another Alexander 2x. Another Ushiwakamaru. Kiwara Tauda. Ludica 2x. Paracelsus von Hohenheim. Jills de Rise 2x. David 2x, Medea, Gaius Julius Caesar 2x, Henry Jekyll and Hyde, Hassan of Serenity 2x, Keoheim 3x, Robin Hood, Jills, Fuma Katero, Diamuit Uaduapan, Billy the Kid, Atalanta, Astolfo for once the two voices were in agreement, Nightingale, Craft Essences, Another Hydra Dagger, Another Motored Cuirassier, Miracle Investigator 4x, Reality Marble, Ryujin Temple, Athen Gabla, Bygone Dream, Monogwaj 3x, Inverted Moon of the Heavens 3x, Extremely Spicy Mapo Tofu 3x, Ruin Church, Storch Ritter, Fragorach, Atlas Institute, Phantasmal Species, Another Holy Shroud of Magdalene, Codecast 2x, Awakened Will, Knight's Pride, Another Formal Craft, Projection, and there they were, 60 new cards. Well not all of them were new but that's gacha luck for you. At least they weren't useless, you could never have too many badass motorcycles after all. You're just lucky you can carry them all in your mind instead of having to buy a garage like a normal person. Quiet you. Eventually, the day came when Izuku's first day at UA began. Though it was just a half day meant for orientation and such, meaning that Izuku had a bit of time later to maybe get to know his new classmate. 
Though knowing my E-rank luck I'll probably be in the same class as Kaken and that one scary blue high Izuku's mental tirade was interrupted a physical one. Take your feet off that desk at once you cretin. You kidding me? Your old school put a stick up your ass or what? Did you imprint your stats on me or what? Well, you have gotten a little stronger even without that intense training you had with All Might. Who knows your body might just be acclimating to the class cards in general. At least that's one positive for all of this. Deku, the blonde bomber finally noticed the arrival of his childhood frenemy. Eloquent as always Kaken. Midoriya-san, I misjudged you. And Bekugo-san here had a point as well. This is Yue reading between the lines and independent thinking as to be expected here. I feel that we got off on the wrong foot. My name is Ida Tenya, a student from Saume Private School. He introduced himself. Ida, that name sounded familiar. Kaken seems to think the same. Saume, huh? I took you for a rich boy. Whatever just stay out of my way. Same goes for you Deku I don't care what miracle you pulled out of your ass to make it in here. But that won't save you when the time comes for us to fight got that. He said, teeth flashing as he stared at Izuku. Though his eyes held a questioning look to them that the newly minted counter guardian could only see after years of knowing him. He had questions but was too prideful to ask. Eh, that curly hair. Midoriya Kun is that you? How have you been? What was that cool drill sword you made to destroy the zero pointer? Did you dye your hair? Uraraka entered the room and asked rapid fire. Izuku would have been ecstatic to see her again. If she didn't just let slip how he beat the zero pointer in front of Katsuki. I know I can't stay mad at her but I understand completely. It's best to just grit your teeth and endure for now. She's waiting for a reply. By the way, oh and there's a caterpillar man staring at you. Emi understood his pain also. Nanny, Izuku questioned out loud while staring right past Uraraka making her blink and turn around where lo and behold was a caterpillar-looking cryptid. So you noticed me, and in less than a second too. Not bad, the person said as he crawled out of his sleeping bag, a nutritional drink in his mouth. This guy's definitely a hero. Normies don't get that weird without some kind of story to tell. Seriously what year are you from? Nobody uses the word normie anymore, which is weird considering the fact that you call your superpowers quirks. A mental argument with himself aside the world kept going without Izuku. Now get going. Wasting time standing around is the peak of irrationality. His apparent teacher finished, much to Izuku's panic. Crap I zoned out. Emiya did you get any of that? You're going out to the field while wearing your gym uniform. I'm guessing a physical test. Crap. Getting changed quickly along with everyone else they ended up arriving on the field at roughly the same time as the newly named Aizawa explained the test they would be doing. Bakugo was the example. He glared at Izuku just before heading to the field where he would show his stuff. Oh boy, I recommend that you guys cover your ears. Izuku spoke up before following his own advice, knowing that Kaken wasn't going to restrain himself at all. Yup, he's cupping his hands together. Izuku smelled ozone. And he's doing the came him boom. G.A.H. It wasn't enough. It was not enough. One of his classmates screamed. A cursory look told Izuku why as he saw a pair of bleeding ears, which themselves had earphone jacks attached to them. Poor girl. Pulling out a smartphone Aizawa showed his class Bakugu's results, 850 meters. That two-handed launch did wonders. See this? That's a hero's score, Aizawa said. Priming his class for the next few tests, said class started to get excited and said some things that they probably shouldn't. That move. Emiya summed it up. What? You think this is some kind of big joke? How about this then? The person who gets the lowest combined scores is expelled immediately. Fuck my life. Wow, my luck really has rubbed off on you. Izuku POV. So, should I be worried about passing out after switching between multiple servants, or is it an upper limit thing that caused it last time? Izuku asked the voices in his head, the latest of which answered him, upper limit, so long as you don't do something stupid like utilizing multiple craft essences, a four-star servant card, and activate in a ranked noble phantasm at the same time you should be fine. Something told Izuku that Emiya was going to hold that over his head forever. That something's name is Emiya by the way. Why did Izuku have to get stuck with the snarky one in his head? Whatever, it was time for him to line up for the first test. A simple 50-meter dash and Izuku had to do it with Katsuki. Sigh, that probably means he'd be sitting close to him in class. E-class luck indeed. Quiet you. Izuku had plenty of fast servants but when it came to speed and efficiency nothing beat Daimue. Installing said card his gym uniform transformed into a dark teal outfit with a shoulder guard on his left side. In addition, his hair was straightened out slightly, similar to the servant's own style. The others looked surprised at this change. None more than Katsuki himself who quickly corrected himself when the timer started counting down. Using his explosive power to propel himself he surely thought that he'd wipe the floor with the apparently formerly quirkless greenette. Too bad Izuku was already at the finish line before he could even get a blast off. A plus agility opus. 0.24 seconds. Yeah, definitely opus servant stats are so unfair. You moron. You've doomed us both. 
What why? His title damn it. Izuku's mind went blank and sweat poured down his face in realization. The love spot. Amiya, if we ever meet in person you have permission to murder me. Your consent is unnecessary. But appreciated, deactivating the card Izuku nervously looked towards his future classmates, completely ignoring Bakugo's enel face. Hoping against hope that none of them saw the cursed mark. Let's see, wide-eyed stare, invisible face, curious look, mischievous grin, intense blushing, cute frog fa wait a minute. Izuku panicked as he saw evidence of the curse going into effect. Crap, was Yuraka blushing more than usual, or is it just my nerves? Emiya help me out here. What do you want me to do? I was born after you met her so I have no prior reference. Taking a deep sigh Izuku decided that it would be best to hope for the best instead of distracting himself. He was so distracted in fact that he barely noticed Bakugou walking up to him, hands popping and with murder in his red eyes, only to find himself wrapped up in some weirdly strong cloth while getting glared at by their teacher. That's enough of that. Stop wasting time with whatever old grudge you have and get back in line. We don't have all day. And stop trying to use your quirk already. I'm getting serious dry eye over here. Aizawa said, giving away his identity, at least to Izuku. No wonder you looked familiar. Here the erasure hero, eraser hat. Seemingly surprised that someone recognized him Aizawa simply looked at his green student before shrugging, letting the explosive one free from his capture tool. Like I said we have work to be done and it would be irrational to waste any more time than we already have. Though we'll be having words about your attempted assault on a fellow classmate later Bakugo. He gave his warning before walking off to the indoor gym where they had their next test. Grip strength. This was a test that required raw physical strength. Usually, a berserker would be best for this kind of exercise but right now Izuku's best answer was a saber. It was Bediver's time to shine. The change this time was a bit more pronounced. Izuku's hair even changed to a completely different style while gaining a silver hue along with the silver armor that appeared on his body. As for his score, 1, 350 kilograms, a ranked strength. Even if the stat was shaved in half it still gave Izuku a 25x boost to his strength. Though someone did come close to reaching his score, a girl named Yeirazu who pulled an industrial clamp out. Somewhere, it came from her body. It was pretty weird actually. Looked almost like my own projection magic but originating from certain areas and with light particles instead of blue electricity. Izuku's inner quirk nerd was screaming at him and asking questions at a mile a minute but the more sensible side of his mind, the side that was terrified of Aizawa, back slapped the curiosity out of him and forced Izuku to pay attention to the next test, the standing long jump. Media could fly, get on my level landbound scrubs. He'd go over his physical changes but the robes kinda made that pointless. Sidestepping. This round required speed and agility, which is why a certain lowly assassin was chosen for the job. Why do I feel like I'm missing something? Either way Serenity gave Izuku a great boost to his agility and helped earn him the second place spot behind the weird pervy kid with bouncy, sticky balls on his head. Izuku did get some weird looks for the skull mask though. It is a pretty creepy mask fair. Throwing event. This was actually the trickiest test of the lot, partially because Izuku had no idea how to throw a ball correctly but mostly because he didn't know which sets of cards would work best. Actually he did have one idea, something that would surely make All Might who was watching him proud. Activating his most durable servant's card Izuku was immediately clad in dark, indigo-colored armor all over, including an absolutely menacing-looking helmet. Artoria, who had an A-plus score in endurance. He wasn't done yet though. By the route I hope I'm right about this. Izuku muttered to himself as his body was coated in one for all's energy, straining it but not snapping it in two as it would have in his base form. Not bad. Though I wouldn't expect to get through this unscathed. You'll probably be exhausted the moment you uninstall. Emiya was probably right. In fact, Izuku already could feel the energy drain and physical strain getting to him, even with Artoria's stats mitigating most of the damage. Good thing he only needed it for a second. You might want to cover your ears again. Or bury them into the ground I guess, Izuku said in warning, to which the earphone jack girl took very quickly. Detroit smash. Izuku's voice echoed slightly, a bit higher pitched than normal as a consequence of using a female servant for an install. The results were well worth it though, and the ranked strength didn't hurt either. A sonic boom immediately burst through the silence as the ball was launched straight into the sky, passing a nearby cloud as it did. An unexpected thunderstorm hit the city later that day. 4,682 meters. The stunned silence from the other students was ended by the sound of a girlish squeal in the background which caused all of them including Izuku to turn in its direction. There was a wild all might watching them from behind a nearby building. The students plus Aizawa took a moment to stare and so did all might, until they all collectively blinked and the number one hero disappeared, as if he were never there, to begin with. Can we all just pretend that didn't happen? 
I'm halfway to believing this is all some weird exhaustion-induced hallucination already. Aizawa offered a way out and Izuku grabbed onto it with both arms. What he said, so what's the next test? Izuku changed the subject quickly. Also taking off his helmet in the meantime, it was getting kinda stuffy. Izuku was going to stay in this form for the remainder of the test since he was 95% sure that he'd collapse from exhaustion the moment it was off. It also gave everyone else a view of what changed his face went through this time. It was mostly the same, however, if a bit smoother. Well, you do have a naturally effeminate face quiet you. Though his hairstyle did change to accommodate for Artoria's longer hair. Bangs flowing down his face and very lightly golden hair replacing his usual green and black. Finally, Izuku's skin color was a bit paler than usual. Aw oh crap, it's happening again. What's happening again? I need details man. If it's something from your past can I expect the apocalypse anytime soon? If only we were so lucky, but no. It would seem that babe I mean. Artoria's charisma skill still has its effects on women. Emiya said, almost sounding resigned to some kind of universal truth. What do you mean by? Oh, Izuku said out loud, finally noticing how the girls of the class looked at him. Fuck my life give it time. You certainly have the power set for it. Stupid harem protagonist bullshit. Why did I drink that potion again? Oh right, he was a nerd desperate for any kind of positive attention. Moving on. The next test was, sit-ups, just basic ordinary sit-ups, with Yuraka as his partner, which he'd have to take off my armor to do. It was nice knowing you Izuku Mash spoke up. Izuku was on his own for this one. Using the card's inherent abilities Izuku unequipped the top part of his armor revealing the shirt underneath, the very tight, very dark shirt which contrasted with his skin. Said skin was on full display as well, since the gigantic stomach and boob window from the original outfit was simply turned into an ab and back window. I have had a continuous and growingly severe lapse in judgment. Comes with being an Emmy, my friend. Get used to it. Well regardless of the irreversible social damage doing this test caused him Izuku easily took first place with his A-plus endurance. Though the next test, the seated toe touch was a bit more difficult, his C-ranked agility stat only getting me up to third place. The girl with the frog quirk, a Suitsuyu Izuku believed was her name, easily took second place with her natural flexibility while the first place winner, Shoujo Mizo did so by creating several arms that reached well over a meter past his toes. So yeah, the competition was tough. Finally, there was a long distance run. And to nobody's surprise, three students, in particular, excelled in this exercise. Ada was basically built for this. That one girl with the creation quirk just created an electric scooter and casually rode through the test. And Izuku had some intense stamina along with pretty good speed. In the end, it came down to Yeyorazu and him. Izuku finally learned her name at around the 40-minute mark where they decided to start a conversation since neither of them was stopping anytime soon. At about the hour mark Aizawa chose to stop the test and call it a tie. A wise move since they both could quite literally go until sundown. So we have a deal, I'll tell you about my quirk and you'll do the same. I hope to see you later this week Midoriya-san. Yeyorazu said before handing him her phone number already written on a piece of paper that came out of her hand. He couldn't wait to learn more about it. You finally get a girl's number and the first thing you think about is her quirk. How appropriate for you. Izuku froze up at Emiya's words. He just got a girl's phone number. He just spoke to a girl for several minutes without stuttering. Seconds away from fainting Izuku stumbled a bit but was interrupted before he could escape his own anxiety through the sweat embrace of unconsciousness. Oh, Miridia Kun can I have an invitation to that? Honestly I have no idea how your quirk works and I'd like to learn more. Plus I'd like to get to know you a bit more. Yuraka chirped from behind him, sending him even further into a panic which just so happened to push his anxiety full circle, keeping him awake for just a bit longer. Plan your dates later. First come see the results. You can pick up your syllabus under each seat in class and from there I don't care what you do. Aizawa broke Yuraka out of her bubbly mood and gave Izuku room to breathe for a bit. By the way nobody is actually getting expelled. It was just a logical deception used to bring out the best in you. I like this guy. The results themselves weren't very surprising, to be honest. Give a boy the collective powers of nearly a dozen ancient magical heroes and he'd be surprised if he didn't excel in basic physical tests. Midoriya Izuku, Yeyorazu Momo, Todoroki Shoto, Bakugo Katsuki, Ida Tenya. Izuku was going to get hell for this from Bakugo later, but for now, he simply stood there, feeling pride over his accomplishment. Five minutes later, Hero Art History. What even is that? Exactly what is sounds like Emiya, a class about art in the era of heroics, costumes, acting, merchandising, etc. The really interesting part was his teacher for that class. Izuku was pretty sure that a certain someone was more than happy with the choice. Questions like these from Emiya were asked regularly as Izuku read his syllabus while walking towards the train station, still in his Artoria armor. The moment he got home however he'd disable it. He was damn sure he'd collapse on the spot the moment he did. Hey, Midoriya-kun. 
Are you heading to the station? Yuraraka asked as she skipped towards him. Izuku could also see Ada and Yeyarazu not far behind. I guess I've made my first few friends already. Must be nice. Wait that's it. No witty comment. No snide remark. No, I'm not gonna ruin this for you. This is nice. Who the hell are you and what have you done with Emiya? Huh? Who knew that all Izuku needed to do to make some friends was to have a voice in his head? I regret everything. Izuku muttered after waking up earlier than usual. Not on purpose, of course, it's just that his muscles were so sore that he got jolted awake by a stray spasm. You knew this was going to happen didn't you Emiya? He accused, only to hear a dry chuckle from inside his head. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, you should probably get up soon. It's almost 6.30, you wouldn't want to be late for your first day would you? It was fairly good advice and Izuku tried to follow through on it, until he realized that simply standing up was agony on his legs. On oh, crap, looks like someone's in a pickle. Maybe you shouldn't use two completely foreign powers at once with no idea of the repercussions. Okay okay, point taken. Take this as a lesson in restraint, kid. Now get up and eat breakfast. Your mother is probably worried that you haven't come out yet. I hate it when you're right. Come on legs, don't fail me now. An awkward meal and an agonizing walk to the station later. Midoriya Khan, are you okay? You look, in pain. Ada asked the green future hero as they walked to UA together along with Yuraraka. He must have caught Izuku wincing the whole time. Did you injure yourself recently? Or did you overexert yourself yesterday? Ada guessed correctly. The latter, using that kind of power at the ball throwing test was a bad idea. It'll take me a while before I can do that without feeling incredibly sore the next day. I should be fine though. It just hurts a little to walk, nothing that bad. Izuku tried to play it off, only to nearly fall over when the train slowed to a stop, jostling him slightly. He just hoped today's hero course lesson wouldn't be too intense. Heroics 101, seconds after All Might announces the battle trial. Fuck my life. I agree. As fun as it would be to watch you wince and flounder through this exam, I'm not that much of a sadist. Swap with me, I'm much more used to fighting with a handicap. On one hand, this is like, the definition of cheating in a heroics class. On the other hand, I can only feel pain. Fuck it, I'll apologize to All Might later. Switching with Emiya was, weird to say the least. It was like being a viewer in your own body while someone else piloted it. Izuku couldn't feel any bodily sensations either which was strange but better than the constant pain he felt earlier. Team D Young Midoriya and Young Kirishima who will be playing the villains their opponents are Young Yayarazu and Young Shoji. Prepare your home field advantage young villains while the heroes prepare their strategy. All Might boomed as the villain team entered the building and began to plan their attempt to defend the fake bomb. It kinda sucks that we have to be the villains in this, but let's make the best of it, right Midoriya-san? His partner grumbled a bit before asking his host for his opinion. Emiya simply nodded and went to install his own card. Not wanting to waste a single second against such versatile opponents, regardless of how inexperienced they were. I share your distaste about playing the villain but everyone has their role. If it makes you feel better you can treat the bomb as a VIP that you need to protect from an invading villain group. Emiya offered while using structural analysis on the building itself. The third floor is structurally weak compared to the higher and lower levels. Almost as if whoever built it lost focus halfway through only to continue with better quality work later. Thinking back to his host's teachers he got a quick answer. Cementos took a lunch break before continuing his work. I'll be right back. I'm just going to prepare some traps for when the other team gets here. I'll leave it to you to find a suitable place to put this. Emiya announced, pointing at the bomb. I suggest the southwest corner of the top floor since it's the hardest to reach with the best odds of our enemies never reaching there. Hiroshima looked surprised for a moment over how his partner took command so easily but saluted good-naturedly and got to work. It's not like he had a better plan in mind. Emiya seeing this smiled softly. Good kid. Now, on to work. Using reinforcement to break the concrete in certain places. Alteration to add the concept of slippery over certain areas of the floor. Placing a few explosive glass knives across the soon-to-be battlefield. What? They were low-yield and the glass shards would disappear eventually. I pity your former enemies Emiya. And I pity your future one's brat. Fair enough. Viewing room, third person POV. Midoriya seems to know what he's doing. But why is he just walking around and touching every surface like that? Minda asked, confused over his classmate's actions. Looking over at Yuraraka and his closest friends at the time for answers he only received a shrug from both. I have no idea. Midoriya Kun never did explain his quirk so he could be doing anything. Perhaps laying traps down that we simply can't see. Ada gave his best guess. Same. Though I do know that his quirk is ridiculously useful in pretty much any situation. I asked him a ton of questions on our way back to the station and I haven't found something his quirk couldn't do yet. Iraraka admitted. To her surprise his Emiya card as he called it was only one of many, albeit it was the most versatile one according to him. 
I should probably talk to him about the specifics later. All Might thought to himself as his successor did seemingly random things around the building with a very serious expression on his face. Was he worried? No, that face spoke of confidence. The kind of confidence that he was sure young Midoriya didn't have. Back with the faker. The preparations have been set Kirishima-san. If things go well for us then it's possible that we may not need to move a finger in order to protect our objective. Emiya said with a small smirk earning a bright smile from his teammate. I like your confidence dude, totally manly. But we shouldn't count out the heroes just yet right. So he was that type of person. And he's smart enough to not discount his opponents. Which while a virtue doesn't really account for just how outclassed the hero team was. Emiya had literal centuries of experience over these kids. Begin. All Might announced from the speakers. Total silence followed soon after. Kirishima taking up a fighting pose while Emiya simply sat down and focused on anything he could hear. A good minute passed before they finally heard a crash somewhere beneath them. There's the first trap. I'll go see how effective it really was. If you notice anything strange please contact me through the microphone Kirishima sat. Surprised at the sudden action Kirishima could do nothing but nod awkwardly as his teammate headed out. His target, the third floor. I love it when my opponents are predictable. Reaching the third floor, moving slowly and methodically while doing so, eyes constantly scanning the surroundings for anything that might hint at a counter trap Emiya found a frankly hilarious sight. A surprised and lightly bleeding Mizo Shoji was currently trapped under what must have been well over a hundred or so kilograms of rubble. Next to him was a floundering Yeyurazu who could barely stand up and take a step let alone try to help her teammate out of his predicament, giving these two his best evil laugh which admittedly wasn't very good. It was just a light, almost sarcastic chuckle which jolted the two into looking in Emiya's direction. Well, what do I have here? Two little heroes caught in my household. How do you like my handiwork? He taunted, to the chagrin of his opponents. How did you do this? It's only been five minutes and this whole floor is full of traps. And why is the floor slippery? There's nothing on it and none of the chemicals I've used could get any friction. Yeirazu was the one to respond first, still trying her best to stand up. Eventually, she got the idea to cut up the floor itself in order to get some traction. Clever girl. Emiya's alteration only applies to the original flat floor. And why would I tell you this? Or more importantly, how will you respond? You can barely stand and unless you know how to fly I don't think you can reach me with that piece of scrap iron. Emiya might have been biased with this but her sword was just so. Basic. An original. It was a long piece of sharp metal and nothing more. As the resident magical weapon armory, he could barely look at it without feeling the urge to shatter it. Flight, maybe not now, but that doesn't mean I can't hit you. Yeirazu replied while stretching out her hand. With his eye of the mind skill Emiya was able to see the attack coming a mile away but what did surprise him was what she created in such a short amount of time. A classical rifle, likely chosen for its relative simplicity appeared in Yeirazu's hand and fired at him immediately after. So slow was all Emiya could think as he projected a copy of Kanchu and subsequently deflected the rubber bullet that was aimed for his chest with practiced ease. Gilgamesh has ruined my sense of speed. When you've dealt with hundreds of magical bomb-type projectiles coming at you at similar speeds bullets just became dull. Firearms. How dull. But I suppose heroes aren't known for their creativity. Let me show you a real weapon. Emiya channeled Gilgamesh with the arrogance in his voice as he said that, really selling the cocky villain role even if he did only say so himself. Why are you so good at this? And who's Gilgamesh? You don't want to know. With that small internal conversation over Emiya finally threw Kanchu in the general direction of the two shell-shocked hero student. I guess deflecting bullets is a big deal in this world. Noted. Ah, he should have probably mentioned that he broke Kanchu before throwing it. Crack boom. The explosive power wasn't too high. It was closer to a flashbang than a real bomb but that was enough to crack the weak point he had made earlier. Collapsing the floor beneath the two would-be heroes sending them back to the second floor while stunning them. Not wasting any time Emiya moved down to his fallen opponents before wrapping them both in capture tape, starting with Yeyaraz, knowing that she could pull literally anything out of her body and not wanting to risk going full Gilgamesh. Shoji followed suit, not putting up much of a fight since he was still stuck under a good deal of rubble which Emiya did help him out of after All Might called the match. Well, that's all for me brat. You can walk these two and your teammate back to the viewing area. It's been fun but I probably shouldn't take over like this for too long for your own sake. He thought from within Izuku's body once again, leaving his host to deal with the aftermath of his mini-massacre. Viewing area, third POV. Well, this is awkward. What is? Did I go too far? You collapsed an entire floor of a building. It was the most stable floor with the least likely chance of causing a total collapse. Right, Emiya had some major issues. Cough All Might tried to catch everyone's attention before diving into his criticism of the fight. Well, he couldn't really use the word fight now could he? It was a one-sided beatdown for the ages. There you go, a much better descriptor, albeit blunt. 
The sweat drops were a dead giveaway that All Might wasn't the only one thinking it. I'd like to point out before anything else that the hero team did an admirable job at first, searching for traps using Young Shoji's senses along with Young Yeyarazu's surprising creation of a metal detector of all things. So that's why the girl didn't have any cuts on her. It was smart of them. But Magecraft had some serious stealth capabilities when you were the only mage alive. However as you've all seen that isn't always enough when faced against a superior opponent. Young Midoriya, would you please explain what you did in detail? Your quirk isn't the easiest to figure out on site, even after such an extended battle. All Might asked, phrasing it to his student's benefit even if he himself had little to no idea what just happened. W well, it's a little complicated. Do you want the full explanation or just what I, I did in the hallway? Izuku's nervousness seems to have surprised the rest of the class, especially Kirishima whose only prior interaction with the boy was with the completely confident Emiya, not the real Greenette. What you did in the hallway should be fine. We do need to keep to a schedule. If Izuku explained his quirk in full it would probably take up the rest of the class. As sure, the Emiya card, W which is the set of powers I, I used for this match, has three main abilities. W well it's actually just one but they have three distinct applications. The first is that I, I can reinforce the properties of anything I touch. I could make a sword sharper, or a stone wall harder, or I could make food more nutritious. Stuff like that. Widened eyes were abundant in the viewing room. That was already a ridiculously useful ability. Though if I put too much energy into things they break and can explode. That explains the collapsing pillars and exploding knives. Shoji commented, still bleeding slightly from the cuts. They weren't too deep though, and Yeirazu was able to bandage him up so he was allowed to stay for the information before heading off to recovery girl. Why yeah, s sorry about that, I I might have gone a bit overboard. But anyway the second thing it can do is the alteration of the properties of existing materials that I can touch. For example, I can make a flat surface rough, a dry surface slippery, or turn an ice cube hot without melting it. What? How? Why? These questions and more were going through everyone's skulls as they imagined just how many laws of physics this ability broke. What's next? Could this guy just create anything he wanted from thin air? Finally there's projection or tracing if you'd prefer. It allows me to create a copy of anything that I have a good enough understanding of. Though I have a particular talent when it comes to blades. All of the previous abilities I've mentioned work exponentially better and more efficiently if the target is some kind of sore. Your quirk is pretty bullshit isn't it? Jiru broke the ice, saying what everyone else was secretly thinking. Yeah, it really is. Izuku sighed heavily with a tired smile. The exhaustion from earlier hitting him full force now that he was back in control. He couldn't even deny it. His quirk was completely broken and he hadn't even mentioned everything it could do yet. Do you have any weaknesses? The question came from Todoroki to everyone's surprise. A quirk that powerful is bound to have a few. He continued. Izuku was caught off guard by this but eventually answered, It's limited by my stamina. A few sighs of relief could be heard from everyone. Until Izuku finished his sentence. I can hold up a low-level card for a few hours at a time if I don't push myself. If I do, maybe half an hour. I haven't had much time to figure out my limits yet. His time limit was that long. Most quirks could barely last 10 minutes before the user had to stop and rest. A quirk was like a muscle. Keeping it working like that for several hours was the equivalent of doing nothing but exercise at full blast for several hours straight. Just how much stamina did this guy have? This question went through everyone's head, with varying degrees of innuendo applied. Though there was one question that was voiced loud and clear. What do you mean you didn't have time to figure it out? How did you get into UA if you never tested out your quirk? Minda for once asked a very good question. One that was answered by an unlikely source. It's because he never had one. Deku, how long did you have this stupid quirk and when were you planning to tell me a? Bakugo finally lost his patience and asked the big question. A hint of betrayal mixed in with his unyielding rage. A hint that only those who have known him for years could catch. Catch him. As sorry, it's just so much has happened recently and I forgot to tell you. W well I unlocked my quirk about three months ago. What the actual hell? He had it for such a short time and was already at this level. Internally Emiya was chuckling to himself over the kid's ignorant reactions. Wait a minute. If you unlocked your quirk three months ago, your Araka's eyes widened in realization over what that timeline meant. The entrance exam was around the same time. Izuku had no real idea of how to explain his own quirk back then. Did that mean? I got my quirk the day before the exams. Funny right? Right. Young Midoriya's ridiculous aptitude for heroics aside we still have a schedule to keep kit. Next up is young Jiru and young Takoyami as heroes against young Yuraka and young It as the villains. All Might spoke as the two teams calmed down and made their way to the building. So, any bets? Kaminari probed, trying to start up another conversation. Personally my money's on the villain team. Hey Midoriya-san, you're friends with them right? What do you think? Surprised at the question Izuku took a moment to think about it before agreeing. 
Actually yes, you're right, Izuku stated, only to get interrupted. Wait I am. Kaminari was surprised. Him being right. That usually didn't happen. W well yes, at least partially. The villains in general have an advantage in this exercise. They have the high ground. A five minute head start to plan. And an opportunity to ambush the heroes if they can manage to guess their travel path. All of which Emiya did, he didn't add. Of course we shouldn't count out the hero team just yet. Takoyami-sen has a powerful quirk and Jiru-sen's quirk is extremely useful for intelligence gathering when used correctly. True enough, we had to learn that harsh truth the hard way. There was no real way for us to win against you was their Midoriya kun. Yeirazu agreed though you'd have to be blind and deaf not to notice how sad she was over her seemingly poor performance. W well I wouldn't say that. If you had created a sonar device and scouted us from outside the building then it might have let you attack the room where the bomb was kept directly. Alternatively, if you had any way to create robotic probes to scout the area ahead of time it could have saved you from the initial traps while giving Mi me a red herring to chase after. That was assuming that Yeyurazu could actually create those things of course, and judging from how she was facepalming Izuku could only assume that she could but simply didn't think of it. Midoriya Kun Would you mind helping me with my tactical abilities in the future? I've recently discovered my ineptitude in that particular area. She asked, still facepalming to which Izuku chuckled slightly. I'd be happy to help Yeyurazu-san. I'll just ask that you help me out with my academics too. You were the top scorer on the exams right? He asked for a fair exchange, mostly to help soften the blow on Yeyurazu's pride but partially because he genuinely wanted to do better. Yeyurazu seeing through this just smiled softly and agreed. Falling into silence once again the group looked back at the two teams that started moving. Villain team, third person POV. Yeyuraka-san, are you sure this is allowed? Ada questioned as he kicked parts of the walls of a random room on the fourth floor, breaking them down slowly. While he did this Yuraka was making them float up towards the ceiling, taking a page from Emiya's book and setting up a trap. Of course it is. Midoriya Kun did the same thing remember. His way was just a lot quicker and cleaner I guess. As long as we don't break anything important that might damage the bomb we should be fine. She explained her reasoning while wiping a bit of sweat off her brow. Izuku made all of that work he did with his quirk look easy but for her, this was one hell of a workout. She barely had half of the traps he did and she was already two divided by thirds of the way to her weight limit. I need to train harder. I was already lucky enough to get into UA but that won't be enough. I have to be like Midoriya Kun and give it my all. Even if I don't make it to the top I'll get as high as I possibly can. And go beyond that. Plus Ultra. Hiroraka yelled. A new fire in her belly. A. P plus Ultra. While wow, she's really getting into it. I can't say I blame her. Especially after that display from Midoriya Sen. I have to give it my all as well. The two continued their work with increased vigor. Meanwhile, the hero team was making their move as All Might called for the exercise to start. Hero team, third person POV. Whatever they're doing it's big and centered on the third floor. You think they're trying to pull a Midoriya? Jiru asked. Not knowing that her comment sent All Might into a chuckling fit as his successor's name became a verb, and ten years before his own did. Do you think their version is an exact copy? Barring the quirk exclusive methods of course. If so would their bomb be in the same place as well. The fifth floor. It was probable, maybe even likely. Luckily for them, they have two advantages that their predecessors did not. Maybe. Yuraka san is friends with Midoriya-san so she might try to emulate him at least. Question. Can your quirk pick you up too? Or is its flight limited to carrying other things? Jiru asked. To which Takoyami responded with a face bomb. How has he never thought of this? Shall I fly us up? Even with Ada-san's super speed, I doubt he could go all out in such a confined area or through the stairs, especially if I only leave one set of them usable. Takoyami tried to regain his composure and dignity after that minor brain fart on his part. At least he has a new trick up his sleeve now. Sounds good to me. Can you create a distraction on the fourth floor first and keep them busy while I search the fifth? Jiru asked, not questioning the earlier facepalm moment. Takoyami nodded in affirmative and summoned Dark Shadow. Picking himself up along with Jiru they flew up to the roof. I shall break open the walls of the fourth and fifth floors. From there you shall endeavor to discover the villain's evil weapon while I face them in battle below. Takoyami's dramatic manner of speech took a few moments for Jiru to decipher. But she got the gist of it. Got it. Find the bomb. You'll keep them distracted. She repeated the plan in normal terms to All Might's secret relief. Following this dark shadow slammed into two walls in quick succession, smashing through each one before the two hero students were placed on their respective floors. Viewing room, third person POV. This doesn't look good for the villain side. They took too long setting up those traps and left the bomb wide open. Were they trying to copy Emiya's method? It would have been viable, albeit less effective but not as they are now. They're simply too slow and lacked the stamina that the veteran hero displayed. 
Indeed, while it is admirable for young Yuraraka and Ida to emulate young Midoriya's plan upon seeing its success, they failed to realize that such a plan could only work once when its secrets were revealed to everyone, not to mention the physical differences between themselves and Emiya. All Might put extra emphasis on the old hero's name, hinting that he knew what really happened. Needless to say, this caused Izuku to sweat something fierce. They were going to need to talk later. Back with the Chicken of Darkness, an enclosed concrete building with few windows and the only lighting being promptly destroyed. This was the perfect battlefield for his dark counterpart. In fact, it might be too perfect. Dark Shadow I swear to every eldritch horror I know. If you don't get back in line I'm going to feed you dirt for the rest of the week. Calming down his stand with his only effective fear tactic Takoyami refocused himself on the two villains trying to make it back up to the fourth floor. You shall not pass. He always wanted to say that. It was too bad that the staircase had so many windows. It forced him to hold his position instead of taking the initiative. Now a more experienced hero, villain might have stopped and thought of a way to circumvent the obstacle in their way. But considering that they were high school students it's understandable why Ida and Yuraraka both froze when faced with a room-sized shadow demon with glowing red eyes. Try me, dark shadow itself said menacingly as it glared down at its prey. Ida Kun, run to the other side of the room, I'll keep Takoyami Sen busy. Yuraraka ordered which Ida followed wholeheartedly, running away from the big black bird monster. Count him in, nice try but do you really thigh irk? Takoyami started to say before he was nearly struck by a human-sized boulder that Yuraraka threw in his direction, dispelling her quirk moments before it hit. Thankfully it was still well within Dark Shadow's weight limit to catch. Okay, that was clever Buo come on. That boulder hit Dark Shadow's face this time. This continued for longer than it had any right to. Viewing room. Third person POV. What exactly am I seeing here? Even All Might was bemused by the situation both teams found themselves in. It got so bad that even Jiru had to stop for a moment to stick her earphone jacks into a nearby wall and chuckle a bit as she imagined the scene going on below. Well, it's safe to say that the heroes have won this round. Even if Ida Kun somehow manages to fight off Takoyami Sen with a surprise attack Jiru Sen would have found the bomb by then. Izuku said sadly, this battle had taken a turn for the hilarious but it seems that it was in the hero team's favor. Oh well, you win some you lose some. Bomb room with Jiru. I almost don't want to end this. This is comedy gold. Oh well, business before pleasure, she said to herself before touching the bomb, ending the exercise in the hero's favor. Smirking to herself she walked out of the room as All Might announced her victory. I wonder if All Might Sensei will let me see a replay of what happened down there. She thought in amusement as she, her partner, and the enemy team headed out of the building. Now all that was left was their evaluation, one that the villain team, in particular, dreaded this time around. Cough, on the bright side. This match was far more even than the last one. A pity comment if there ever was one. All Might was a bit lost for words once again. Was this going to be common with his class? To begin with, the villain team made an admirable effort to utilize a winning strategy from young Midoriya's match. However, they left out several important facts. Can anyone tell me what those are? He let the question hang for a few seconds before Momo raised her hand to explain. The hero team in this case had completely different quirks and skills compared to Midoriya Kun. This prevented them from enacting the plan as quickly or effectively. Her answer seems to have taken All Might by surprise, only for it to be amplified further when Izuku added his own two cents. In addition, while the plan itself was a proven success, that only applies to an opponent without prior knowledge of it. Jiru's information-gathering abilities along with the fact that I and Yuraraka sent our friends added to the probability of them trying the same plan. A rookie mistake, they'll learn. All right, that pretty much sums it up. Good job you two. Now, on to the next two teams. For the hero side, we have young Todoroki and young Bakugo against the villain team consisting of young Hagakir and young Sato. It took all of three seconds for everybody in that room to realize what was going to happen. Dot 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 well, we're fucked. Sato summed it up. Five minutes later, maybe I shouldn't have made this exercise based on random chance. I'll be frank, this match is just a lesson in the fact that the world isn't always fair and sometimes there is no path to victory. All Might sheepishly admitted as poor Sato was slowly getting thawed out of his ice prison by Todoroki who had an equally sheepish look on his face. Bakugo just looked annoyed at not needing to do anything, along with being paired up with Todoroki who was pretty much his polar opposite. Silent, controlled, painfully polite, and above all else cold. That sounds about right 2x that sounds about right Izuku, Momo, and Emiya said in unison. Let's give this another try. Surely the remaining teams won't be as unbalanced as the prior. Hero team, Minda and Koda. Villain team, Aoyama and Kaminari. Hopefully, the symbol of peace lost what little hope he had. Seven minutes later. Okay, so the random chance lesson worked a bit too well. Next time I'll choose teams based on the data from this and the upcoming classes. It's time for the final match. 
Let's just get this over with. All Might nearly deflated from the disappointment as a freshly charred Maita and is still twitching Koda was sent to Recovery Girl's office while the villain team joined them as an apology for going a bit too far. Final teams. Hero side. Young Ashido and Young Ajiru versus Young Asui and Young Siro. Finally a seemingly fair fight. Both sides had a mid-range and short-range fighter, with one highly mobile member for each team. In addition, neither team had a quirk that completely eclipses the others this time. The two teams went into a new building leaving the viewers to do their own pre-match preparations. And he bets people, for once it isn't a sucker one. Personally, I think the hero team has the advantage with their combat-type quirks. Pretty sure tape won't do much against acid. Plus Ajiro knows martial arts. Kaminari tried to lift the mood and make things interesting. I don't know about that. Mobility is a big factor in this test and in that regard, Asui and Siro have a significant advantage. I guess it all depends on how they utilize their quirks for maximum effectiveness. But all in all I'd put my bets on the villain team. Izuku gave his two cents. Emiya was in agreement with this one. Combat power is all well and good, but mobility is what won capture the flag type battles like this. And it wasn't like the villains had a lack of offense either. Is it really okay to bet on something like this? Especially in such a prestigious institute Momo was about to argue until she noticed that All Might was slowly nodding at both points and the benefits of ETH. I'm with Midori Akun on this one. I've learned the value of prep time and mobility after those first two matches. Looking up at the various monitors the viewers saw that the villain team had already started their preparation. Siro seemed to be using double-sided tape to raise the bomb into an elevated position outside of the build, making it difficult for the hero team to find let alone get to. Interesting. Even if the heroes find out the trick only Ashido-san would be able to reach the bomb. And at a slow pace comparatively speaking, Momo analyzed, filing that away for any future plans she might need to make. This class was certainly going to be a challenge compared to the others, and that's assuming she's able to do it under perfect conditions. Asui-san and Siro-san can both reach that place much quicker than Ashido-san, or just toss her off her climbing groves. Defensively speaking the villain team has the advantage here. Izuku said his piece, the dialogue between the two keeping the others silent, barely having the chance to jump in. Frogface is going to be the linchpin in this. If she goes down then discount Spider-Man probably will too. Bakugo agreed in his own way. It all depended on how the hero team tried to tackle it really. His own approach would probably be. Shock and awe baby. Mina yelled as she and Ajiro rushed into the building, each heading to a different part of the building scanning it for the villains while constantly maintaining contact. The moment one of them found their opponent they'd call it in and rush to the other's help. It was slow going at first but eventually, Mina did find Siro seemingly all by himself and attacked accordingly, leaving a quick message to Ajiro about where they were. They didn't have much time so Ashido made the executive decision to go ham and attack the tape man directly. Globules of acid ready she launched them at Siro while charging into melee range. At the same time, Mina covered her limbs in a particularly strong acid as a preventative measure against Siro's tape. Siro tried to bind her torso but a quick dab of acid at the connecting tape is all she needed to escape and continue her assault. It was this single-minded thought process that prevented her from noticing the strange shadow at her feet or the subtle sound of something sticky separating from concrete. Hero, Mina felt a crushing weight on the back of her head. Suyu's relatively small size boosted by gravity was enough to send the pink alien face first onto the floor. Siro san tape. Hero, Suyu yelled, Siro responding instantly by binding Mina with his own tape before using the standard issue capture tape to finish the job. Young Ashido has been captured. With the confirmation given the two villains stuck together waiting for the second hero to make his appearance, Ajiro couldn't feasibly get the bomb on his own, his only option now being to fight the two villains on his own. It didn't take very long for the prideful martial artist to try his luck. For honor, Ajiro charged at Siro, dodging and weaving between his lines of tape, completely determined to get rid of what he perceived to be the bigger threat. A single line of tape could end a martial artist after all. He forgot, however, that Siro wasn't the only one with a grappling attack. Oh god, that feels so weird. Ajiru, who was only wearing a martial arts gi, felt Suyu's tongue wrap around his midsection before getting slammed into a wall where Siro finished the job, wrapping him up with the capture tape. The villain team wins. Damn, we got played like a fiddle. Ajiro wasn't taking his loss well at all. Not that he could really blame anyone for this. The enemy team won fair and square. Mina took it a bit better but still pouted at Tsuyu for the surprise attack which left her with a bruised jaw and a bloody nose. Did you have to aim for the head, Asui-san? Mina asked, still soothing her aching face. Sorry, I was going for the torso but you were running too fast to be accurate, Kiro. Oh, and call me Tsu-chan please. Tsuyu apologized, handing Mina an ice bag whose contents were made by Momo and Shoto on the spot. Only if you call me Mina, and promise not to kick me in the back of the head again. 
She gave a grin before hugging the smaller girl, making it clear that there were no hard feelings. Ajiro and Siro meanwhile were less amicable. Was this the start of a legendary heroic rivalry? Probably not. Guess I lost the bet. Oh, well. Did we ever decide on a penalty? Kaminari asked. They hadn't. Eh, hey, how about I buy the two Brainiacs lunch? I wanted to talk to Midoriya for a bit anyway. He offered, which Izuku couldn't really deny without seeming rude. Besides, it would be nice to get to know his classmates a bit more. Hang congratulations Izuku. You've completed several mystery quests within the day, including the following, first of many, Heroic Prodigy I and Monster Trio, for winning your first fight against a human opponent, attaining a prodigious reputation with several heroes, and for being known as one of the three strongest students in your class, plus 10 SQ and a summon ticket. Nice, might as well use that ticket now. He walked with his classmates as the animation went through, a rainbow glow catching my eye and making my jaw drop when the golden saber background made itself known. Hell yes, wait a second, I recognize those shoulder pads Emiya thought ominously, half remembering a battle he had long ago, mostly just to see what would happen. The card's light finally faded showing the striking figure hidden within, a fully masked man with silver hair and presumably turquoise eyes. He was wearing a black and silver suit with an armored torso that looked almost futuristic, as strange as that sounded coming from an ancient hero. His most striking feature however was his weapon, a completely red, double-sided blade that looked like it was made of crystal, with the only metal part being its handle. Servant, Saber, my true name is Sigurd, so you are my master. Please, give me your orders. I promise to promptly execute them. It was the day after All Might's battle trial and Izuku's relationship with his classmates has been. Complicated would be the best word. Though with Katsuki in said class it was to be expected, the blonde bomber had been avoiding Izuku ever since Emiya's display yesterday. At least he wasn't trying to kill him anymore. Thankfully the rest of the class was significantly warmer towards the green hero. Relatively speaking, a few of them were intimidated by him for some reason. More accurately by me. And could he really blame them? Emiya was terrifying in action, especially when he was playing the villain. Though Izuku did make some actual friends. Five of them to be exact. Yuraka, Ida, Yairazu, Kirishima, and through him Ishido joined his not-so-little friend group. It's only been a day and Izuku had already made more friends than he's ever had all his life. Wait that's really sad actually. He deflated at the thought. And then there was All Might's reaction to him using Emiya during the battle trial. He was still a little embarrassed about that. I understand that OFA did a number on you yesterday. And since Emiya is part of your quirk I'm willing to let this slide. Using every aspect of your quirk is essential for a hero, just don't grow dependent okay. You still need to learn how to become your own hero, not just hang on the coattails of the past. That speech still gave the young hero chills, what was he thinking? Taking the easy way out like that. While he was in the middle of his self-induced depression Izuku didn't notice Yairazu walking towards him while he walked to school, making him jump as she tapped his shoulder. Oh, sorry, I didn't mean to frighten you Midoriya-kun. I thought I'd walk with you to school since I saw you from the window, she said while pointing at a nearby limo, whose chauffeur was giving him a thumbs up and a grin for some reason. Hey, a limo, why is that guy smirking at me? Not wanting to be rude Izuku calmed down and fell into the same pace as Yairazu as they approached the school. The closer they got, the louder it got and they soon found out why when they saw a veritable army of reporters stalking outside the school's perimeter. W what's going on? Chance of all might an interview could be heard from the gathered reporters. Right, stupid question. Excuse me, can you make some room? We need to get to class. You fool. You caught their attention. Run, run for your peace of mind. Don't you mean life? And isn't that a bit excessive? No that comes late forget it. You're wasting time you fool. A student. Are you a member of the hero course? Are you in All Might's class? Please answer a few of our questions. Several dozen variations of these questions and requests rang out nearly deafening them as the two students were forced to run away towards the safety of UAS barrier. Minutes later in class, you survived your first encounter with the media, plus 3SQ. Wait really? Not that I'm complaining but that was relatively tame for something that earned me three whole quarts. Was it a joke? A warning of things to come? Or was he just overthinking things? Midoriya Khan, are you okay? You've been starring at the wall for two minutes straight without blinking. Yeirazu asked, the rest of the gang equally concerned. Aw crap, he pulled a Deku again. Why yeah, I was just in deep thought for a second there. Izuku shook the self-deprecation off and reassured his new friends. Was it about your quirk? Can you talk about it a bit more? It looks super complicated, and really strong. Hiroraka asked with her usual enthusiasm, her ending statement getting nods from everyone else who was listening in. Oh oh, okay. I don't mind but it might take a while. You see my quirk is divided into three major parts. First, it allows me to summon a variety of items with various effects. The items that I summon are part of a huge inventory that gets new additions regularly, though these additions are completely random. 
Izuku went into full nerd mode over his own quirk, taking out a notepad full of data and illustrations so quickly that the others could have sword he summoned them. He also summoned Emiya's bow for emphasis using the include function. This bow for example is incredibly durable and can only be used correctly by someone with super strength. And they believed it. The material alone felt almost alien to anyone who saw it, almost reminding them of black fighter jet armor. At this point, the class was paying full attention to the powerful weapon created by Izuku's quirk and his quality note-taking skills to a slightly lesser extent. Wow, these are pretty good. You're really thorough when it comes to your own quirk. It's surprising to think you've only had it for a few months. Sadu commented, asking to see them for himself and further shocking everyone when he turned the page to see that everyone else's quirks were also part of Izuku's database. Hehe, <laughs> it's a hobby of mine. I've always found quirks to be so interesting so I took the time to get to know each of them. I planned on being an info-based hero before I got my quirk but even after I unlocked it the habit never died. You were planning to be a hero without a quirk. That's gotta be the bossiest thing I've ever heard. And honestly, with these notes, I think you just might have been able to pull it off. The amount of detail you have on my quirk already is kinda scary. Sadu said, impressed. Bakugo just scoffed and muttered stalker under his breath. T thanks. Nobody ever took me seriously when I said it. That really means a lot to me Sadu-kun. Izuku gave him a beaming smile, completely taking everyone by surprise with his genuine, almost fragile-sounding gratitude. I feel like I'm missing something here. The collective thought went through the confused students' minds. Why would such a powerful, intelligent person have so little confidence in himself? And why would nobody acknowledge his obvious talent before now? Little did they know, but those questions would have to wait for another time since Aizawa entered the room seconds later. All right listen up. I just had to deal with the overly excited media outside and I'm in a bad mood. You all did well in yesterday's battle training. Midoriya, I'm going to need an update on your quirk information by the end of the week. Your original description of it is nowhere near good enough. That got Izuku to jump a bit. He really should have seen that coming. Finally, we will be doing a homeroom activity. You'll be picking a class president. I don't care how just have it done by the end of the day and don't bother me until then. The annoyed teacher promptly zipped up his sleeping bag and went into his usual comatose state. Well, that happened. How should we decide on class president anyway? Minda chose to ignore the fact that their teacher basically left them to their own devices and instead focused on the issue at hand. I for one think it should be decided democratically. That way we will know that whoever is chosen deserves the position. Ida suggested, barely hiding the fact that he desperately wanted it himself. This was met with mixed results. Democratic my ass. We all know everyone will just vote for themselves. And if by some fluke of nature a single extra gets two votes then they win without proving anything. Bakugo spat out not trusting the extras to know what was good for them. Rudeness aside, Bakugo-san has a point. None of us really know each other too well, and having just one vote kinda discourages us from wasting it. How about we use the instant runoff system? It will take a little longer but this way we can really decide which of us deserves it. While we're at it we might as well introduce ourselves. That should help us decide. Ida suggested, starting off with the introductions herself. My name is Ida Tenya. I am from Salme Academy and my quirk is named Engine. I was the class president of all my classes from junior high and I believe that I'm perfectly qualified to lead our class to achieve our full potential. He introduced himself with the discipline of a military officer, and then immediately ruined it when he nervously looked at everyone else to see how he did. So we have a veteran here. The competition's pretty tough but a man's gotta push through anyway, right? I'm Kirishima Ijiro. I'm no veteran but guarantee that if I get elected I'd be the manliest choice possible. Oh yeah, my quirk is called hardening. No prizes for whoever guesses what it does. The redhead of the group introduced himself boisterously, patting Ida on the back to show that he did well and that he respected his courage for going first. And with that, the students introduced themselves one by one each either making valid cases for why they should be the class president, or they were like Bakugo and Minda who immediately distanced themselves from the group, either through impudent rage or from sheer awkward perversion. This went on until Yeyurazu's turn came up whose quirk brought on another question that was stuck in everyone's mind. My name is Yeyurazu Momo and my quirk is called Creation. I can synthesize any material or object that I know the atomic structure of, and that I can imagine in my mind. However larger objects take longer to make, and I firmly believe that I'm qualified for the position, thank you. Her introduction was pretty basic but then again, what more could be said this early? Yeyurazu, isn't that the name of a famous hero power couple from way back? Siro asked which Yeyurazu confirmed. Cool, so you already have a bit of pedigree on your side. And that quirk sounds super cool too. Kinda like Midoriya sends right. He finished putting the spotlight on the greenette. Oh oh, yeah I guess it's a little similar. He stuttered slightly at the sudden attention. Might as well get it over with. H hello, my name is Midoriya Izuku. 
and my quirk is called the Throne of Heroes. I've only had my quirk for a little while so far but this is the gist of what it can do. You already heard one aspect of it but I might as well explain all three. He took a deep breath before continuing, his voice becoming faster and higher pitch in the minds of everyone else the more information he gave out. It allows me to summon a variety of things with an even wider variety of effects, including objects, locations, pocket dimensions, and even skill sets which I can use as my own. Currently, I have over 100 different summons at the moment. However, the accumulation rate on those items is completely random, though that randomness is also a blessing in a way, given the amount of versatility it affords me. Currently, I can cause destruction at a large scale or in very precise amounts. My own range of attack varies though my upper limit is somewhere within 4 kilometers. Additionally, I have some healing capabilities though I've never tested them. I also have a variety of transportation methods that can be used by others, though again I haven't tested them yet, though. And I have a mental stat sheet if you will of anyone who I consider a friend and vice versa which contains information on the person's current health status, mental state, location, and other similar information. That about sums it all up though it's a bit more complicated than that. Just before his audience's ears started to bleed Izuku decided to end his massive mutter spree and finish up his introduction. I am not sure if I'm qualified to be in a leadership position but I promise I'll try my absolute best if I do get elected. He finished with a shy smile, noticing that he went off the deep end once again. What the actual hell dude? Your quirk explanation is longer than all of ours combined. Jiru yelled, breaking the fourth wall from the utter overpowered bullshit that just came out of Izuku's mouth. Yeah, did I say something wrong? Hours after Izuku's near-unanimous election, along with a closer but still simple election of Yeyarazu for the vice president position the entirety of Class 1 ended up sitting together at lunch in order to finalize a few things along with the goal of getting to know each other a bit better. One of the more common points of bonding being their collective bewilderment over just how utterly broken their new president's quirk really was, along with the more interesting flavored text aspects of said quirk. So basically each card has a history behind it that explains what they do. Usually, in a vague way, I might add. Magic is vague, get used to it. Even my own tracing magic, while simple in theory is overly complex in practice. A lot of these look like variations of old legends. Kanchu and Baku, for example, are ancient weapons of Chinese origins and from the story, you told us it seems to follow the same framework as the original. And then there's this holy shroud of Magdalene Yeyarazu started off only to get interrupted the moment she mentioned the holy relic. You want to make came the startled and obviously flustered voice of a girl with vines for hair. If Izuku remembered correctly she was one of the students of 1B though he didn't know her name. By the Holy Father is that real? You uh, Midoriya-sen was it? Am I I speak to you in P private later? The girl asked her fellow greenette who was caught a bit flat-footed. Huh, why would she why is she blushing so much? And what's with that heavy breathing? Run you fool, I've seen this once before. Run before you lose you loud alarm. Oh, thank goodness we're being invaded. Emiya what the hell are you even? You know what forget it. I need to get these panicking students under control before someone gets crushed. Stupid media, always causing problems. Izuku thought, unknowingly quoting Aizawa word for word, saving his girl troubles for later as he went through his mental library of cards for something that could help him. Maybe he could summon something large to distract them. No, this space was too cramped. He'd probably crush a few students, the exact thing he was trying to prevent. A flare from Ku's runes. But that also comes with a lot of heat and with this many people packed so close together. Too risky. That leaves. Install, David plus ruin church. Izuku's voice echoed through the cafeteria, perfectly audible despite the noise pollution that was present. Noise pollution that didn't last long when the students were shocked silent at the change of scenery. The now deathly silent room was filled with confusion and dread, up until the students all heard a melodious, almost angelic music being played. Harp of healing. I guess it also gives you the ability to play any melody you've heard before. How useful. Indeed. Though you may want to wrap this up before they start looking at you like some messiah figure. Shit Emiya was right. Disengaging the installation immediately Izuku went back to his usual meek demeanor and addressed the students. Though since David was a fellow green at his overall appearance didn't change much. I'm sorry for the aggressive relocation but now that we've all calmed down, I think that we can all agree that getting crushed over a false alarm would be a pretty embarrassing way to go, especially a UA student. He went for a humorous approach which thankfully went over well with them. I'm going to release my quirk now, please go on and head outside in a calm and orderly fashion. Don't worry, even if there is something else going on I'll be right here to provide a quick escape if necessary. He said soothingly, looking every student in the eye to solidify his intent even further. After checking to see that they weren't all about to panic once again Izuku finally dissolved the church around them, letting the setting return to the previous cafeteria. Thank you for understanding, now let's go. We don't want to keep our teachers waiting for much longer I think. 
Izuku's true words and a soft smile got everyone to move towards their designated evacuation areas. His own class, in particular, followed him and met up with Aizawa along the way, who praised Izuku for his handling of the situation while also subtly threatening him to turn that paperwork into him a SAP the creation of fucking pocket dimensions was not something to ignore. After the chaos caused by the media, the students were told to head home early for the day. The teachers apparently wanted to do a few checks on their security, just in case, and nobody was about to complain over a day off. Well, nobody except for a certain young vine-haired girl. Instead, she spent trying to find her fellow Greenette but to no avail. A small quest that would have large consequences for her future, and the futures of all who she knew. What might those consequences be? Well you can find out. Right now, you a bus, next day. So Midoriya-kun, did you ever manage to talk to that vine-haired girl from yesterday Kiro? She seemed to be really in a hurry to talk to you before the alarm went off. So you asked her fellow Greenette sitting next to her. Izuku had an apologetic look on his face. I'm afraid not. After all the craziness that went on it totally slipped my mind. Hopefully, it wasn't anything too important. He felt a little bad about it but it wasn't exactly his fault. She was from 1B, right? Does anyone here know anything about them? He asked, trying to get a conversation going. Not really, it's only been a few days after all. I barely got to know all of you guys by name let alone those other guys. I've heard that they're being taught by Vlad King though. He's pretty cool, Kaminari answered, getting interrupted by Aizawa who said that they had arrived and that they were going to have their chance to meet their sister class soon enough. After getting off their bus class I was pleasantly surprised to see what their teacher was talking about. Coming off of a similar bus mere meters away was their sister class along with their own homeroom teacher who walked up and stood next to his dark-haired colleague. As I've said earlier, you will be doing rescue training today along with class 1B. Along with Vlad and myself, your third teacher today will be none other than Aizawa was cut off by a rather androgynous voice that came from the huge structure that they were supposed to be taught in. Me, welcome to the unforeseen simulation joint, or as I like to call it, the USJ. The space hero, 13 announced, much to the joy of many students that loved the heroine, especially Achako, Izuku noticed, who claimed that 13 was in fact her favorite hero. Good to know. What, are you planning on getting your girlfriend a gift later? W what, she is in its no shut up and look over there. Is that what I think it is? Emiya shouted out of nowhere, breaking Izuku out of his mini panic attack, just in time to see a gaggle of what he assumed were villains walking out of some kind of purple cloud portal. And honestly, who would have faulted him for thinking that? One of them was literally wearing the disembodied hands of what were probably his former six holy sweet mother of the root or those Izuku nearly threw up after installing Emiya and structurally grasping his opponent's unique accessory. Shimura 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 S-H-I-M-U-R-A And just as quickly as it came the deluge of information was cut off as Emiya switched with his host, giving him a much-needed reprieve from the villain's rather morbid past. Stay back everyone, those are real villains and dangerous ones at that. Eraserhead, keep an eye on the purple one, he has some kind of warp quirk. The veteran hero ordered his class and advised his current colleague, now wasn't the time to stand on superficial rank. He's right, but we have a problem. Our comms are being jammed. I can't get in contact with UA at all. We're pretty much in the dark at the moment and there's no telling whether there are villains attacking elsewhere. For now, we need to stand our ground. Midoriya was it. I skimmed your file and it said you had an information gathering aspect to your quirk. Can you tell us anything about those villains? Vlad King asked his fellow red and silver hero who did not disappoint. The one with a visible brain somehow has multiple quirks. Strength, durability, possible regeneration. I won't know specifics unless I face him in combat. The hand villain can disintegrate any object upon making contact with all five fingers of either hand. Finally, the purple villain has a warp quirk, though once again its limitations are unknown to me. Emiya systematically revealed his opponent's abilities to the best of his abilities. Ooh, thank you, Midoriya-san. What about the others? The silver-haired student had missed quite a few. The rest of the villains are trash. I wouldn't be surprised if they picked them off the streets less than a day ago. He gave them the blunt truth. Half of these morons probably didn't even know how to properly use their quirk, let alone how to actually fight. Harsh but fair red guy, harsh but fair. Meet shields. Block Eraserhead's line of sight so Kirajiri can do his thing. Tamura Shigaraki ordered his men who obeyed, albeit begrudgingly after being called meat shields. Damn, eyes open everyone. I've lost sight of the warper and attacks can come from any direction now. Aizawa warned them. This was a worst-case scenario if ever there was one. If the enemy had even a modicum of sense and the firepower to back it up then they were effectively screwed. Luckily, the enemy was about as green and naive as his own students and decided to attack in the most predictable, least effective way possible. The warper appeared behind the group of heroes, alone, and with a clearly visible physical weak point that was just short of being a glowing video game mechanic. 
Thank the root for stupid villains. Gidirg. Before anyone else could react, Emiya activated one of his favorite weapons from his unlimited arsenal. A spear of exorcism that ripped apart all forms of magic. And if he was correct slice quirks too. The dark portals that appeared in front of him mid-charge were cut to ribbons before they could even fully form. Completely catching the portal villain off guard. Sadly the villain got wise to his opponent's capabilities and skipped any and all monologuing in favor of scattering the students and teachers across the various disaster zones. With the exception of a few of the more maneuverable students and a certain brat who was somehow cutting fucking wormholes, Kurajiri was still racking his brain over that one. You scattered them over this whole building along with your cronies. What exactly was your plan there? You know that they'll just be systematically taken apart by the hero students? Not to mention the two teachers. Emiya taunted, having noticed the endpoints of each portal that transported the other students. He was starting to think that this whole invasion was a sham, or at least poorly planned to the extreme. That's for us to know and for you to find out, hero. The cloud man said, almost disbelievingly. The eyes that this kid had was nothing like the others. They were cold, piercing. They almost reminded him of a more stable Tamura. Then I guess I'll just have to beat it out of you. By the way, did you know that space-time bends when met with a sufficiently dense source of energy? Wait why did he say that? Did the stream of information between him and his host go both ways? Did Izuku always have these nerdy one-liners? Oh, whatever. Khaled Balg. The twisted sword turned magical black hole was launched. Sadly it was done too late as Kirajiri noticed the surge of energy and decided to GTFO immediately. Emiya's one-liner only hastened the cloud man's escape. Damn my addiction to heroic dialogue and over-analysis of what shouldn't make sense. Izuku cursed this time, switching back after the main threat had passed. Sorry kid, I can't risk taking over for much longer after using an ranked phantasm like that. Best to save a few aces right. Emiya had a point. Besides other than those three main villains he could probably deal with the others on his own. Or at least he could with the help of his fellow students. I'm sorry to ask this of you all, but we need to help everyone who got teleported. Receiving a few quick nods the remaining students decided not to waste any time and moved on to each of the disaster zones, utilizing their high mobility quirks to do so. A smile on his face from the bravery shown by his fellow students Izuku stopped one of them before he could get too far. Ada Kun, other than me you're the fastest of us. Please head to UA and tell the teachers what's going on. I'd do it myself but... Izuku gave the brainy black big bird and his handy master a side-eyed glance. Giving his class president a quick salute Ada immediately switched directions. Understood Midori Akun. Just hang on and keep the others safe. I'll be back as soon as I can. The blue-haired youth followed through with his promise and Yuzane bolted his way down the street with one goal in mind. Get help. Taking a moment to calm himself Izuku looked out towards the plaza where the majority of the so-called villains and their leader stood, each one looking towards him with varying degrees of shock and anger. Guess they were a bit sour overseeing one of their best being forced to retreat. Speaking of which, don't think I've forgotten about you boy. I don't need to be close to you to send you away. The cloud villain's distorted voice appeared from somewhere. Izuku was a bit too busy falling several meters into a lake to really notice. Quickly switching to his media card Izuku casually floated towards the yacht at the center of the lake where he noticed two of his classmates and two other members of class B. Uh, hello. Are you all okay? Izuku said from above, thoroughly scaring the four hero students who nearly jumped out of their skin at the sight of a dark robe-wearing hooded figure. Ah, uh, sorry about that, it's just me. Izuku reassured them sheepishly, lowering his hood. His newly visible feminine features and shockingly purple hair surprising the students further. Midori Akun. Wow, those transformations are pretty varied Kiro. Even without the hood I almost didn't recognize you there. Considering the fact that Izuku now had different colored hair, eyes, a more feminine face, and elf ears. That was probably fair. I need a status report. On my way here I noticed a few villains swimming nearby. They seem to be taking things slow for now but we can't rely on that forever. Before we continue I'd also like to know about all of your quirks. Taking stock of the situation was paramount, theoretically. Izuku could just snipe the nearby villains with a few dozen ether cannons but that would just be overkill. As you know, my quirk is called Frog. No prizes for whoever guesses what that does. Though I do have the proportional strength of a frog so that's something I guess, and I can fight really well in water. Suyu explained her pretty self-explanatory quirk, followed by mind is underwhelming but still quite useful sticky ball quirk. Next was a boy from class B who looked about as plain if not even more so than Izuku did before he got his quirk. I can create solid panels of air from my breath. They're invisible and strong enough to hold a person up but they aren't very durable, so they could theoretically use them to walk all the way to shore. But that would take too long. Unless, can the platforms be moved after they are made? Izuku got an affirmative from Tsuburaba. Apparently, they could. It was just difficult to do without breaking the thing mid-flight. I guess that plan's a bust then. 
What about you? Izuku asked the black-haired girl that had remained silent up until that point. Apparently she was the type to show rather than tell. Taking a small stick out of her pockets and growing it out to the size of a bow staff before shrinking it back down. Wow, that's so cool. I have so many questions. Does growing something cause its density to fall? Or does it create mass from thin air? Or from your own body? Is there a limit to how large you can make something? Can you also shrink large objects or is it a one-way smack? Thank you Asui-san, I needed that. No problem, and call me Tsu-chan. Noted. Okay so I have a few plans available. Sadly all of them kind of leave me exhausted or injured afterwards so I'll have to rely on all of you to help me out. He admitted, already having chosen the most optimal plan. I'll throw myself overboard and launch an attack that will cause a vortex to form. From there I'll have to rely on Tsu-chan to carry one of you over to the shore, I'll help the other. I'd normally try to help carry two people but... This plan kind of involves me breaking a few fingers, Izuku admitted, not giving the others much time to argue before he switched to the David card and yeeted himself off the boat. Wait wa come at me you useless mooks. Delaware smash. Izuku roared, flicking his finger at the villains, officially defeating them in what had to be one of the most embarrassing ways possible. And then Minda threw his sticky balls at them for good measure which guaranteed its spot as the most embarrassing way to go in villain history. Using the recoil of another smash to send him back onto the yacht Izuku followed up by grabbing onto Kodai with his good arm and launching them both nearly all the way across the lake with David's not too shabby physical stats working their magic. No broken bones required. Suyu taking this as her cue grabbed Minda using her tongue and followed suit. I, I probably should have asked this before jumping, but can you swim miss? Izuku asked his raven-haired tag along. He took the nod she gave as a yes and let go, allowing her to swim alongside him. Thankfully the shore was only a few meters away so he didn't need to stress his broken fingers for much longer. Looks like Aizawa sensei and Vlad sensei managed to escape whatever disaster zone they were sent to. That's good. And from what he could see there were a few more students waiting at the entrance of the USJ, a good sign showing that the two teachers escorted them before jumping into the fray to make sure that they stayed safe. So you survived your little swim little hero. I hate to admit it but you were right, these, I refuse to call them gentlemen, are hardly a match for you students, much less actual heroes. The cloud villain, Kirajiri admitted, nonchalantly talking as if he saw no problem with their attack plan falling apart so thoroughly. Of course every plan has a backup, though if I'm being honest, this was the real plan from the start. Normally we'd wait until All Might arrives but that little show you gave has given young Tamura some ideas. He moved the conversation along. While this was happening Izuku gave a worried look towards the raven-haired girl whose name he still didn't know. And to his surprise, she understood his intentions instantly and made a run for it towards the entrance. Good. I don't think I can fight seriously if I had to worry about others getting hurt. These three villains in particular have a completely different aura than the others. And he wasn't just talking about their quirks. Funnily enough, despite the big one's intimidating size, it was the hand villain that unnerved Izuku the most. You should feel honored brat. Consider yourself the mini-boss before we get to the final act. Namu, kill him. The monster did not wait a single moment longer to throw itself at Izuku, catching the young hero off guard from the creature's sheer speed. Even with his enhanced body, Izuku had no hope of blocking the first strike which hit him square in the chest, sending him flying and knocking the wind out of his lungs. As shit, did he just break a rib? He needed some way to heal himself or this fight wasn't going to last much longer. Damn, I'd rather not use this but I have no other choice. Working past his broken ribs Izuku took a deep breath and activated the one skill that David had which he didn't want to use. Divine Protection of God As soon as the words left his mouth his previous injuries all but disappeared. And besides that, he was even able to fully block Namu's second punch when it finally made contact. Install, Holy Shroud of Magdalene. Charging up OFA in addition to his gear Izuku returned everything the Namu gave him. Only to have his punch get no soul like it was nothing. Nani, was all Izuku could say before Namu grabbed his arm, attempted to crush it, and upon realizing that he couldn't Namu sent Izuku flying into the nearby landslide turned glacial zone. Gah. A few bruised ribs later Izuku decided that he'd stick to ranged attacks against this guy from now on. Midoriya-san. What happened? Todoroki yelled, running out of the now frozen zone along with the vine-haired girl from 1B. Did he really need to ask? Izuku simply pointed at Namu and then at the crater that he left behind after getting flung halfway across the USJ. My lord what is that abomination, and, why is that a holy shroud? Shizaki exclaimed, one half terrified and half left in awe at the divine aura that the shroud of Magdalene was exuding and now that she noticed, Izuku himself was releasing the same aura. Now isn't the time you too. This guy is dangerous, he's faster than anyone I've ever. Okay, he's the second strongest person I've ever seen and my punches don't seem to do any damage to him. Izuku explained, not wanting the two of them around, knowing that if either of them got hit by Namu it would not end well. 
Of course they don't. Namu here not only has shock absorption but also super regeneration. He was custom made to kill All Might so it's no wonder that a brat like you can't even scratch him. Tamura bragged, effectively marking him as the most moronic villain that Izuku had ever met thus far. Right, never mind. Our enemy is an idiot and just gave me all the information I needed. Install, Diamuid. Izuku put on the appropriate servant card for this type of opponent. Still, he needed a backup plan. I can beat him but... This will likely leave me exhausted if not outright unconscious afterward. Sorry but I'll have to rely on both of you, okay? Todoroki in particular gave Izuku a look of surprise but ended up accepting his role. In the dual-haired teen's mind if things went wrong then he could always step in and save his powerful but prideful classmate. Shizaki merely obeyed and readied her quirk, blushing the whole time for some reason. Fu Izuku had forgotten about the love spot again. Screw it, now isn't the time. Cycling through his supply of craft essences and settled for one of his more situational ones. Install, Athen Gabla. Izuku wanted to lock down this thing as soon as possible. That kind of strength and speed was far too dangerous to let it run free and attack any nearby student should he fail to defeat Namu in one hit. Even with his ranked agility this creature was far too fast to take on without using OFA. And even with his enhanced durability, he was bound to break at least a few bones while attempting this. I should really work on that. Yes, yes you should. Emiya's confirmation acted as a silent starting pistol as Namu and Izuku charged towards each other. The giant golem for once finding himself to be the slower of the two. Eye of the mind. Izuku forcefully activated his skill. The stress of having a three-star servant, a three-star craft essence, and another four-star craft essence at once already pushing him to his limits. His utilization of OFA simply pushed him even further beyond. The only thing allowing his body to keep up being Ath and Gabla's curse which prevented him from faltering even if he wanted to. Holding Gidirg forward first Izuku utilized his superior reach to deflect Namu's first punch, lodging his cursed spear deep into his opponent's side. Not enough. Whatever this thing is can't be allowed to move, live any further. Preparing his coup de gras Izuku, Emiya sliced through the monster's legs with surprising ease, leaving the beast to fall forward. In a last act of desperation, Namu attempted to go for a bite trying to end the fight by taking his opponent's head only to miss by mere centimeters, only taking off a chunk of his opponent's shoulder in the process before the creature's arms were taken as well, leaving the now bloody spearman victorious, but vulnerable. A hand was held outstretched, centimeters over Izuku's face, a hand that came far too suddenly for the exhausted heroic catalyst to react let alone respond to. Die. Shigaraki cried out and almost delivered on his threat if only his quirk didn't fail the moment that he touched Izuku's face. The half-second of surprise was Shigaraki's greatest mistake. It gave Todoroki just enough time to send out one of his signature glacier attacks, completely covering the villain's body up to the neck. You might have managed to take out the big guy Midoriya-san. But I'll settle for capturing the mastermind behind all of this. With a little help from his homeroom teacher of course, but he would keep that from himself. While I'd hate to interrupt you two in your little competition, do either of you know where that warp villain went? We shouldn't let our guards down until and they're gone. Aizawa asked, only for it not to matter as Kirajiri pulled a Houdini with his two main allies while leaving the SHC mucks behind to fend for themselves. Well, that's unfortunate but on the bright side now all we have to worry about are a bunch of fear not, for I am here. Aizawa began again, only to be interrupted once more by his boisterous colleague's entrance. Alright, I guess that's my cue to take five. Five hours I mean. Aizawa face splinted immediately after, followed closely by Izuku who finally ran out of stamina. Todoroki and Shizaki who were the only ones around merely sweat drop before walking towards All Might to explain what just happened, and to get some help with capturing the rest of the rank and file of course. Hopefully, today would just be an anomaly on an otherwise normal school year. Musutafu Hospital Unknown time after the USJ incident, suddenly regaining consciousness Izuku stood straight up in his hospital bed, seemingly completely uninjured and even full of energy, as if he'd simply woken up from an energizing sleep. He was alone as far as he could tell. Well how is this possible? Izuku asked himself. He could distinctly remember going unconscious after sustaining some pretty serious injuries. Surely he couldn't have been healed and had his stamina replenished so easily could he? That would be impossible. Then again, so was his quirk. Speaking of which, he decided to check it just in case. W what the? So many quartz, well over 100. Where did they all come from? Did you really think that you could go through everything you did yesterday and not receive a few rewards? And a free healing alongside it of course. Alea was quite happy with the way you eliminated that bird-like abomination. Good work Izuku-kun. Mash congratulated the pseudo-counter-guardian for eliminating a threat to humanity, even if it was a relatively minor one. 
Oh okay, I get that but was that thing really worth this much? Not that I'm complaining of course. Izuku quickly corrected himself, hoping that his big mouth hadn't just cost him a good chunk of quartz. He was about to get an answer from his AI companion only for both of them to be interrupted by the opening of his room's door. Ah Midoriya-san, you're awake. That's quite the potent healing quirk you have. Or whatever it is, Yue was rather vague about the details, but that's none of my business. Now, how are you feeling? A nurse walked in and began performing his standard examination of Izuku, quickly determining that the young man was seemingly in perfect health. One quick meeting with his assigned doctor later and Izuku was released from the hospital and was met by not only Inko but a few of his teachers along with Principal Nezu. And after a tearful reunion with his mother, the rodent principal began to speak. It's good to see you Midoriya-kun. Let me be the first to congratulate and thank you for your brave actions during the USJ incident. He said jovially, however, Aizawa quickly brought the mood down with the reality of the situation. While your actions were acceptable, barely, due to the circumstances, no more leeway can be given. You will give us a full report on your quirk and what exactly it can do, starting today. Come with us, the sooner we can get this done the better. Aizawa's tone gave no room for argument. Really this was a long time coming and the USJ incident only made it a higher priority than it already was. Sigh, this is going to take a while. Can I just give you my notebook? Otherwise explaining my quirk verbally might legitimately take all day. A raised eyebrow and a shrug were all he got from his homeroom teacher. Okay good. Now they just had to the Midoriya residence to grab it and he'd be free until they inevitably came back to ask him questions about his quirk. So he may as well prepare some answers ahead of time. Another sigh escaped Izuku's lips. Were a few days of rest too much to ask after what he just went through? Seeing as the first question Aizawa made was on why the notebook for his quirk had its own glossary and index. The answer was probably yes. This was going to be his homework assignment for the foreseeable future, wasn't it? Next Monday, class won a homeroom, lunch. Was it just me or has Aizawa sense been even more intense than usual? I mean sure, we got invaded by villains but this seems a bit excessive. What do you think Midoriya Khan? You were the last one to see him before he got like this. Sadu wondered before asking their class golden boy, or problem child, as their teacher liked to say. Let's just say that I accidentally gave him more homework than he's given us in the last week and leave it at that. Honestly, I don't blame him for being a little annoyed. Not to mention the upcoming sports festival. His teachers were probably under a lot of stress nowadays. Speaking of stress, Oi Deku, don't think that just because you pushed back those shitty villains that you'll stand a chance against me in the sports festival. Consider this an early declaration of war. Akugo gave Izuku a thumbs down before walking out leaving those remaining in the class with massive sweat drops. Huh, well someone's pride's been injured. Though if we're being honest, this whole festival is gonna be a three-way battle between you two and Todoroki-san. Siro said what most people were thinking but didn't want to admit, sending the class into a bit of an emotional downer. Todoroki agreed easily enough, having the same thoughts himself, though Izuku seemed to take exception to this. Well I see what you're getting at. That's not the type of attitude that will get you very far Siro-san. You're all really strong in your own rights. You wouldn't have gotten into UA if you weren't. So long as you try your best I'm sure you'll surprise yourself. He gave words of encouragement, partially filtered by Emiya who knew all too well that power wasn't everything. And besides, it's not like Kaken, Todoroki-san, and I are perfect or anything. We all have our weaknesses, you just have to look for them. His own weakness being glaringly obvious should anyone bother to look. It was simply harder to spot when you were too busy staring at his quirks flashing it. I should follow my own advice, powerful it may be, but the throne of heroes is too much for my body to handle. It might even be more dangerous than one for all if I'm not careful. Later that day, Midoriya residence. Are you sure that I should be maintaining so many summonings all at once Emiya-san? What if I pass out again? Izuku asked the voice in his head as he cleaned dishes while a few of his servants walked about his apartment doing various things. Inko was also there, happy to meet a few of her son's new friends, for the lack of a better word. He refused to call them servants even if some of them insisted on calling him master. How else are you going to push your limits? Each time you did so it ended up pushing those limits back. Don't worry though. If you end up collapsing again I'll be here to jumpstart your mana back into place. And failing that, we'll just dispel ourselves to ease up the pressure on you. They wouldn't want another voice in Izuku's head after all. They got lucky when he collapsed with Daim you had installed. In the end, Izuku only ended up gaining his own love spot which was thankfully just cosmetic. The curse was not passed on. Worry not little master, you are in good hands. Even if some of us are more combat capable than others. And some would be more suited for an Irish pound than taking care of a polite young man like yourself. She gave a small smile to Serenity. And a very different smile to Kuchu Lane. She was not fond of the womanizing warrior, Druid. What a cold woman, did I annoy you in a past life or something? I'm getting the same feeling from that red servant too. 
Just my luck. At least my master is rather impressive. A fine warrior in the making if my perception is still as good as my lance herself. If there was one thing they could all respect about Ku it was his seemingly unwavering loyalty to Izuku. The other servants tried to get an explanation from the druid but all they got was him muttering something about finally having a decent master for once. Please don't fight. I don't think our master's apartment would survive the fallout. I don't expect that we'll all like each other but at least be civil. A newly summoned Arash said, being the most diplomatic of Izuku's current servants even if he was somewhat weak in comparison to the others. Thank you Arash Kun. My apartment already has enough wear and tear behind it from when Kakin used to visit. I don't think that it can handle much more. Sure he could just as easily release any servant that got too rowdy but Izuku would rather not test his reaction time in such a high stakes situation. With the dishes finished it was time for Izuku to make use of those new quartz, now with the supervision of his servants. Who knows, maybe some of them would know, or at least know of the things he'd summon. Taking a deep breath Izuku to the Lord of RNG to bless his roles this day. Many of the roles were simply duplicates of old ones however there were quite a few that were somewhere between amazing and horrifying. 10x summon unique results. Craft essences. Soul eater. Heaven's feel. Kaleidoscope. Potion of youth. Gander. Volume and hydrogerum. Servants, Antonio Salary 2x, Kuchulain, Kuchulain, time truly was mysterious, Miu Edelfelt, Kid Gilgamesh, Media, Artoria Pendragon, Mordred, Artoria Pendragon, Nero, I'm with Master on this one. Why do so many of these sabers have the same face? I can understand the multiple versions of Arthur, but the Roman Emperor Nero has no reason to be the same. Caster Ku couldn't help but add after Izuku finished cataloging his summonings. It was almost as if someone was deliberately making certain heroic spirits look very similar to each other. See can we just stop talking about Artoria? Please, Emiya said through Izuku's would seem that the history that Emiya shared with the once and future king was complicated, if the desperate fear in his voice meant anything. Moving on, how should I start off my training? Heroic spirits are powerful but as we saw back at the USJ my stamina can't keep up with all of that power. Plus I need to work on one for all as well. It's going to be difficult juggling all of those things. It was difficult enough balancing his OFA training with his school work. Now he had dozens of other abilities to work on that Izuku had only barely started tapping into. He was a bit overwhelmed if he was being honest. Simple, the best kind of training is dynamic combat training. And with the witch here, we should have more than enough space to fight properly. Isn't that right Media? The caster servant scoffed but went through with the request in the end. It took barely any effort and she would be lying if she said she wasn't grateful for the opportunity to meet her younger self in the future. Stepping into his now mile-wide room Izuku could not help but wonder just what he'd be capable of after a few years of dedicated study. If Medea could pull this off in less than a minute and with seemingly no effort then what could he do with the help of all his heroic spirits? The thought scared him as much as it excited the formerly quirkless boy. Master, allow me to be your initial sparring partner. To start with, I want you to attack me with the intent to kill. This will give us a good baseline for your level. As a bonus, if you manage to land a real hit against me Emiya san will teach you how to transcribe your thoughts on a page using projection magic. Are you ready? Arash asked his wide-eyed master who was obviously interested. I instant note-taking. No more carpal tunnel. No more pencils catching on fire from the friction. Izuku's eyes narrowed, glowing slightly green as he installed the Artoria card and let one for all flow over his body. Arash flinched slightly at the stare he was given. Emiya might need to prepare to teach Izuku that technique quicker than he expected. Dark Lion Smash Izuku didn't know what caused him to yell this specific attack name but it just felt right. Regardless Arash's eyes widened as he tried his best to dodge the fierce attack. His B-plus agility barely keeping up with the Greenette's OFA empowered 5 install. The archer servant was gonna have his work cut out for him. Using his bow and arrow creation skill Arash immediately sent out two blunted in quick succession at Izuku who, despite his explosive speed, had a significantly lower agility of C, which itself was halved from the installation. Add that to the fact that his explosive power came from an unstable and self-damaging ability and it was no wonder that the arrows would easily hit their mark. Two hits, two future bruises for Izuku's face. High endurance or not, Arash's arrows would leave a mark if they kept hitting him directly. Alright, step 1, I gotta get better at moving around. The problem was that he was going far too quickly for his mind to react. Maybe if he lowered the power. Slowly, painfully. But surely Izuku managed to rein an OFA to the point where it stopped hurting. Which if he had to estimate was at about half the intensity of its full glory, give or take. His muscles still tingled with power, but at least now he wasn't convulsing in pain from every twitch or accidental movement. Going in for another attempt Izuku found it much easier. Though still a bit jarring to move around. His speed was cut in half, which while still dizzyingly fast for the formerly quirkless boy was much easier to handle than his previously blinding speed. 
and it went without saying that not pulling a muscle with every movement was a definite plus. Good work master. You seem to be adapting quickly to your chaotic power. Maybe that card of yours is lending you more than its strength. Or maybe his master was just that good. That is yet to be determined but Arash had high hopes for the young lad. T thanks, but I'm still barely holding on. One for all is crazy. It's so much harder to activate than magecraft and its raw power makes doing it while controlling the output each time tricky. If only it worked like reinforcement where he could just use a static amount of enter wow I'm an idiot. Arash was a bit taken aback by the self-deprecating comment that seemingly came out of nowhere. That was until he saw the aura that appeared around his master each time he used that dangerous power flare up before weakening significantly and finally stabilizing. The result being a dark green aura of raw power surrounding his master whose fist was now in front of him Okra. Dark Lion's Mane. Pouncing Smash. The name of the attack could use some work but it was more than good enough where it counted. Izuku's armored fist crashed into Arash's face with a somewhat sloppy but still effective straight punch, sending the surprised archer across the training field. Of course, this was Arash we were talking about. While he wasn't the most powerful servant out there, not even close, he was one of the most durable ones. A ranked endurance and an a ranked X-ranked robust health skill made sure that he bounced right back from the hit, albeit with a grimace on his face. Ouch, good thing I can just card myself later. That would probably leave a mark if I had to stick around. Not bad master, not bad at all. But don't think that a single good hit will mean I'll let you off lightly. Since you've made a pretty big breakthrough I suppose it's my turn to bump up the difficulty nay. Arash began to use his impressive clairvoyant skill and the pacing of the battle immediately shifted into a defensive one on Izuku's part. After all, how do you fight someone who is not only faster than you but also more experienced and with the ability to more or less read your mind? All Izuku could do was try to get used to his new speed and maneuverability to dodge the barrage of arrows that was sent at him as best he could, so not very well. Uh, oh, why the face? Oh god please go for the face again. Two to each shoulder, one to the face, and another arrow to a certain piece of Izuku's anatomy that he'd rather not mention later and the green hero inevitably tripped over himself, leaving him open to a direct hit from Arash's arrow. I think that's enough for now master. You did far better than I expected but you aren't quite ready to face a servant yet. I'll dispel myself and let Emiya-san and Medea-san take over since their skill sets are closer to what you need assistance with. With that, the bow-wielding archer broke up into blue particles only for the previously mentioned servant to take his place. Izuku immediately felt the additional drain on his mana supply, yet another factor to consider in his training. Emiya cracked his neck as soon as he appeared much to Medea's displeased look, one that the silver-haired archer ignored. It feels good to be out of that head of yours for a while. It's spacious sure but way too cluttered. He teased which did get a slight giggle from Medea. True enough, intelligent as he may be our master tends to overthink things far too much. Now, let us begin with his training. We shall begin with a bit of theory work involving the basics of magecraft of which Archer and I are masters. Medea's mastery was unquestionable, but never let it be said that Shiru Emiya didn't master the little magecraft that he had access to, even compared to a caster servant. Emiya's skills in material transmutation were legendary and impossible to replicate without incredible amounts of time and resources. We'll begin with the basics among basics, magic circuits and the conversion of mana and odd into prana, a skill so basic that it is the equivalent of breathing for a mage, which only makes it more fascinating that our dear Emiya somehow managed to mess that up. Despite his usual aloof demeanor Emiya couldn't help but blush at this. He was an idiot as a teenager, sue him. And before he tries to justify it, you did the equivalent of jamming a burning rod into your spine hundreds of times without once thinking that you were doing something wrong. There's a limit to stupidity before it becomes absurd. Knowing this only made her defeat to her co-instructor's younger version even more embarrassing. Moving on, let's make you those circuits shall we? Luckily you already have quite a bit of odd within you and I have quite a bit of experience cough creating cough circuits on myself. Add in a bit of structural analysis and caster's mana generation and Emiya muttered while grabbing onto his master's right arm. G-A-H. The future hero screamed out, collapsing as he felt a pain far more severe than anything he'd experienced before, even compared to breaking his bones from misusing OFA. Right, I probably should have warned you about that. My bad. Well, it shouldn't hurt nearly as bad from now on. Go ahead and open up those new circuits. It should be a similar feeling to what summoning a servant or installing a craft essence feels like. Emiya quickly apologized before pretending that him frying his master's nerves and soul into magic circuits was normal. And why you did that to why yourself how many times in the past? Izuku had to ask, the pain making him stutter for once instead of his nervousness. Just count yourself lucky that Alea likes you and that those new circuits are permanent. Now get going, we don't have all week. Grumbling, Izuku got back up, still holding his arm as phantom pains made it twitch. He focused and did as Emiya asked, almost immediately noticing the familiar sensation of a new energy source appearing in his body. 
It still hurts a little to use, but nowhere near as bad. My arm feels warm and maybe a little numb. Is that normal? His teachers both nodded so he took his word for it. So, I know how to access them, what now? He asked, eager to make use of his new power. He would make that pain from earlier worth it. To start with, try to pour a small amount of energy into this orb, Emiya said, projecting a bare bones iron ball in his hands. Gently, too much energy and it will explode. And if you don't do it quickly enough, all you'll do is waste prana. The exact methodology for magecraft is highly individualized. We'll let you try to figure it out on your own at first and jump in if we think you need a push. Izuku was surprised by the Lace's fair style of teaching but from what they said a person's basic magecraft was unique to them so there wasn't much they could do for him without ruining an important part of the process. So just pour it in right. It shouldn't be that hard crack and those are shards in my hand. Sigh, I warned you. Get used to this. To be a magus is to walk with death, even more so when you're fresh off the circuit like this, Emiya said, making Izuku grumble before he tried again with another sphere courtesy of his fellow counter guardy. Don't get discouraged. This took me a while the first time too. The rare gesture of sympathy from Emiya got to Izuku and helped him redouble his efforts. Hours later, Izuku's POV. There has to be some kind of trick to this. Emiya told me to pour my prana into the orb right. Then maybe, instead of pouring the energy in as if it were water into a balloon I covered the sphere in the energy and let it soak into what I could now identify as tiny cracks in the iron. Iron spheroid. 98% fee, 1% C, 1% trace elements, 2 kilograms, original creator, guy dollar sign divided by Emmy dollar sign. Lifespan, 2.4 hours. Age, 1.3 minutes. A stream of information entered my brain directly, shocking me enough that I lost control of my prana and the sphere's already short lifespan was cut shorter. Not bad. You not only managed to access the sphere's information, but you even reinforced it, albeit for a short time. You're making decent progress. Emiya complimented, having seen exactly what I had done. Your efficiency could use some work though, but that will come in time. I'll give you a few tips on how to control your prana easier later on. For now, let's try to perfect your structural analysis to the point where you can do it multiple times without fail. Media added making me sigh. This was probably going to take all day. It did. The next day, regular POV. His talent is insane. It took me weeks before I could even use structural analysis and he became adept with it within a day. Granted once he got that one down reinforcement and alteration came somewhat naturally to him, the only thing limiting him being his misunderstanding of what a magic circuit was. But still, his master was showing prodigious progress. Quite, who knew a boy from the modern age without a single inkling of magical history would be the one to give most magi a run for their money. Let us see if his talent is limited to the basics or not, Medea decided. Izuku had already mastered structural analysis to an acceptable level and had even learned to reinforce objects to a certain degree during his attempts. Let's start with his origin and element. We'll move on from there. Normally they would finish off his training and material transmutation but Medea was curious. If Izuku was this talented with something he might have no affinity for, then how quickly would he learn something relating to his element? Master, you can stop for now and come over here. We need to run a few tests on you before we continue. All you have to do is sit down in this magic circle and follow our instructions. Izuku stopped his mana flow and did as he was asked. Truth be told he was getting rather frustrated doing the same thing over and over again with only minimal progress. Now, most of the time, mages would use esoteric, and in Medea's mind, outright juvenile methods to discover one's element and origin. Tarot cards, tea leaf reading, personality tests, most of which were wildly inaccurate or overly simplified. However, as a mage from the Age of Gods, she had something much better in mind. The magic circle was simply a way to keep the residue and clean up to a minimum. Using her item creation skill, Medea crafted a short sort of pure ether clump material. It was essentially a blank slate, pure mana given form into a clay-like substance and hardened into a solid by Medea's will. Its only useful property. It was completely elementally neutral and an excellent magical conductor. The element is the easiest to find. All you need to do is pump mana into this sword. Don't worry about the output, just go wild. Emiya, you know what to do. They were going to abuse the silver-haired man's unique skill in structural analysis to be as precise as possible with Izuku's test results. Immediately upon receiving Izuku's full mana flow, which was suitably impressive befitting a person who could handle summoning multiple heroic spirits at once, the blade crafted by Media exploded into thousands of different colored shards. Afterward, the shards themselves were destroyed in various ways. Explosions, flashes of light, some simply turned into tiny grains of sediment which were scattered by the explosion-generated wind. Strangely after a few seconds, none of the remnants expected of such messy reactions could be found in or outside of Medea's magic circle. What a rarity, four elements, a significant affinity for fire and a minor affinity for wind. 
an unusual element of light and finally a connection to imaginary numbers. Our master is going to be a monster in terms of energy and spiritual manipulation. Emiya explained the earlier light show with his analytical ability. It made sense when he thought about it. A connection to imaginary numbers explained Izuku's talent for handling class cards. The more common elements were merely a nice bonus. A rarity indeed. Now for the origin. This test will be a bit more uncomfortable for you master, I apologize in advance. Origins were far more intimate than simple elemental affinities. They were the very soul of a being reduced to its base parts. The driving force that separated the individual from Akasha. And to reach this origin, Castor needed Izuku to sleep. Sleep and confront the deepest depths of his mind and soul. Every positive, negative, or neutral experience that he had ever gone through would be reviewed by Izuku's soul and judged accordingly. It would be a harrowing experience for practically anyone, regardless of their past, but for her master. Let's just say that having an analytical mind only worsened the experience many times over. Izuku was going to be tossing, turning, and sweating for a good while and neither servant was thrilled about being forced to watch. They could only hope that their master would finish his experience with closure and a new understanding of himself rather than more trauma. Izuku's mind, weak, tiny, and sore all over. This was the condition Izuku Midoriya found himself in. The circumstances that brought him to this point were rather blurry though. It hurt to move, even his thinking felt sluggish. He did recognize his environment however, he remembered it all too well. After all, this was the day his hope, his wish to become a hero crumbled and nearly faded completely. The day he saw what heroics had become, what his best friend had become and what he would grow to be. The day that he decided to stand up not only for himself and for an innocent person, but for his ideal of heroism itself, only to be brutally beaten into the ground. To many, heroes were simply glorified police turned celebrities. They captured villains and upheld the law, nothing more. All for the glory, fame, and oftentimes wealth that came with the position. Izuku refused to accept that. This denial was partially why All Might was his favorite hero without question. In some ways, he was the only hero that Izuku truly believed in. Celebrity he may be but All Might did not do what he did for the sake of the fame. His fame was a consequence of his heroic actions and outlook, and at times it acted as a medium for him to inspire others to follow in his footsteps. Nothing more. His fortune, while significant, was almost entirely used for charitable causes, arguably doing more to benefit the common people of the world than the rest of the country's government top and philanthropists combined. Meanwhile, the man himself lived a relatively quiet and humble lifestyle only spending money on his medical treatment and other necessities. Even to this day, as the man's successor, Izuku could barely fathom how he made such sacrifices, how he risked himself day in and day out for no reward other than the smile on the faces of those he saves. It was one of the many reasons why Izuku had a hard time accepting his position as the man's protege. Could he live up to such an example? Well, he'd sure as hell try. Picking himself up from the ground, the visage of Izuku's five-year-old self had a face that did not belong to a child. It was the look of a young man who had finally discovered his calling and who prepared to place his all into it. It was a look filled with a strong conviction for his chosen path, the path of a guardian who fought against all who dared tarnish the meaning of the word hero. Oh, you're getting back up you stupid Deku. Are you that desperate for another beating? Or do you think that a quirkless nobody like you can stand up to me? A shadowy effigy of what was once his best friend appeared the moment he stood up, eyes filled with a fiery malice that was still there in the real Kakin even if it had mellowed out with age. Spoken like a true villain, Izuku said what he should have told the boy years earlier, his true feelings over what his friend had become. Using your quirk to hurt others, just for the sick pleasure of having power over someone. That was the act of a villain, no matter how many sycophants and greedy adults said otherwise. The copy of Kakin flinched back, looking angry beyond words. It charged at Izuku shortly after though the young man in a child's body paid his attacker no mind. He was far removed from the childish problems of his past. His current enemy was beyond such petty problems, and in his mind, beyond his current ability to deal with. The scenery around him changed once again, this time to a surreal wasteland, filled to capacity with blades of seemingly infinite variety. The only distinguishable feature of the land, aside from the weaponry, was a small hill that was seemingly empty except for a single blade, a particularly beautiful one if Izuku was being honest, and standing next to this blade was an auburn-haired boy, grasping the handle as if to pull the sword. Behind him was a familiar silver-haired man who was attempting to discourage his younger self. Younger self, how did I ah? I guess our memories have finally started to merge, at least a little. It was only a matter of time. Having another persona sharing brain space would do that to a person. While Izuku was listening into the two Emiyo's conversation he couldn't help but grow angry and decided to step in. You're wrong. 
Wanting to save someone doesn't mean that you wish that they were in danger. A hero saves those in danger, but they also help prevent the danger from happening in the first place. My interruption shakes the two Emias out of their somber poses, the younger of which looks at me in confusion while the familiar older hero paused to listen. This world isn't perfect, it's downright nasty sometimes, but that's why we're here, to try and change it for the better. I hold out my hand to them. It wasn't wrong to help others, and it wasn't wrong to search out those who needed help, even if the reasoning behind his actions were somewhat selfish. Emiya's dream of being a hero wasn't a mistake. That doesn't stop his ideals from being borrowed. He doesn't even know why he wants what he wants. His suicidal approach to upholding a dead man's dream is only going to get himself killed, a pointless loss for a fake dream. Archer's justified pessimism tried to shut down Izuku's point. He knew better than anyone where his younger self's ideals were likely to take him. Neither did I Archer stopped in his tracks, a look of mild shock on his face. The day I first saw All Might on a screen. It's difficult to explain. It felt like the rest of my life was opened up to me. My path in life was already laid out and I just had to walk it. Izuku's thoughts turned darker. Images flashing through his mind of his early childhood. Hope was eclipsed by despair and almost disappeared entirely. Pain and anger took the place of admiration and happiness. I still walked that path despite the darkness and pain that it promised. Even when I was diagnosed as quirkless, or when my mother didn't believe in me I refused to give up hope. Now, now my dream is closer than ever before, so close that I can almost taste it. Nobody would stop him from realizing that dream, not even himself. HM, it would seem that you have the conviction to chase after your dream but tell me this. How will you handle those who claim to be heroes but act otherwise? Those false idols that your society loves so much. Archer was more willing to indulge his new master's ideals, mostly because he understood what he truly wanted unlike Shiru Emiya, but partially because it was his own ideals that Izuku was fighting for, not someone else's. I'll follow All Might's example and prove them wrong myself. I'll remind the people of this country of what a real hero is. No, I'll surpass even All Might and bring society into a new golden age, even if I have to drag it there kicking and screaming. Archer smirked, amused by the fire in his master's eyes. Well said. Fine then, go ahead and do as you wish. I'll be there to offer help whenever I can. Just try not to pull the same stunts as I did when I was young and stupid. The younger Shiru elbowed Archer in the stomach at what he said. Thankfully Izuku's vision started to white out before he had to watch the rest of the brawl that was sure to happen. Training field. Master seems to be progressing well. Though the way his mental landscape manifested itself was rather concerning. Mind meld or not he shouldn't have access to your memories, let alone that god's forsaken place, Medea said as she laid down next to her master, several monitoring spells on standby to make sure her master remained stable. Oi, that was all Emia said, not bothering to defend his soul since it was quite literally god forsaken. He was somewhat disturbed that Izuku could access his reality marble but it seems as if he had no influence over it. Other than having him come into contact with his younger self there was little to be concerned about. He definitely has some origin related to protection, though not of himself. He has a nearly suicidal desire to protect others and would pay almost any price to do so, especially when in a dire situation. However, there is something more, something I can't quite place. Protection but not necessarily through defense. Her master was willing to attack preemptively if needed, an interesting quality for a hero. At least his origin wasn't hero or something equally ironic, said the hero wannabe. Perhaps zeal for the second one? A zealous want to protect others would make sense from what I've gathered of Master's character. The boy did get rather intense at times, especially when he heard about the reward for doing well against Arash. Perhaps, however, I believe the word avidity fits better. An avid desire to protect. Yes, that may be the closest this language can come to describing our Master's origin. A dual origin, however the desire to protect is clearly the dominant force. Her master's avidity merely acted as a fuel for the first concept. Avid, guardian, a good set of origins that should benefit him in any endeavor he takes so long as it's in the name of preserving something. Though he'll need others to be there to keep him grounded in reality. Speaking from experience here, he dealt with his own issues and those of his younger self enough to know that a good support structure was essential. Luckily our master seems like quite the hero gatherer. And without the misplaced arrogance and stupidity this time, Medea said, happy that her master didn't grow arrogant with everything he was given, unlike a certain blonde from her past life. Thankfully Izuku seemed to be the exact opposite of Jason in every way that matter. That isn't necessarily a good thing. The poor fool doesn't know the burden he's placing on himself. Oh, he didn't mean the hero business. Izuku was perfectly aware of how difficult that road would be. Emiya just understood all too well the dangers of being a harem protagonist. May Alea have mercy on his master. Hours later, Izuku's bedroom, 4 a.m. Ugh. Okay the first two dreams I understood, but why did the third one have to be a multi-hour long tutorial on how to feed and maintain a pride of lions? 
There was also something about avoiding the king's hammer. Weird. Well, might as well get up and check on Medea. Grumble grumble. Right after breakfast, he did miss dinner. After all, maybe he should time his training sessions a bit better, especially if falling asleep for several hours after heavy exercise became a common occurrence. Mom's probably worried too. Best to get going before the apartment floods again. Don't panic again mom. Sorry about missing dinner. I just pushed myself a bit too far yesterday and went to bed early. Please tell me breakfast is ready. I apologized and let my stomach do the rest of the talking. Physical, mental, and magical exhaustion is a killer combination. Oh okay sweetie, just make sure not to make it a habit. And yes breakfast is ready. I made you something a bit heavier since I was sure you'd be hungry. Izuku took no time at all to start drooling. If only he could show his appreciation for her. Hey mom, my quirk gave me something pretty amazing yesterday. It's a drink with healing properties that rejuvenates the body, would you like to try it? He wouldn't give her the full potion since that seemed like a bad idea, but mixing a small amount of it with her orange juice couldn't hurt right. Really, that sounds wonderful Izuku. Is it okay for me to drink it though? Shouldn't you save it for an important occasion? Inko was reluctant to take such a seemingly valuable item for herself but those concerns were immediately denied by Izuku. Who could be more important than my mom? You deserve it. I've noticed that you've been more tired lately and I just thought a few sips of it could help you with that. And don't worry so much, I could always get more later. At least Izuku thought he could. It was just a silver card so he was bound to pull a few more eventually right. You're too sweet sometimes Izuku. Thank you. Now eat your breakfast. By the way, you should check your phone. I heard it ringing a few times while you were asleep. With a quick thanks, Izuku dug into his breakfast, idly wondering who could have called him. The only people that had his number were his mother, Kakin. Oh right, he had friends now. He ate the meal a bit faster than he should in anticipation of possibly hanging out with people who didn't bite his head off at every word. While that sounded sadder than I thought it would, Izuku thought with a mental cloud over his head up until he checked his messages. There were four. That had to be a new record for him. Oh that's right, I did promise to talk with Yamomo about our quirks. Yuraraka and Ida texted to see if I wanted to train with them after school. And Kakin cursed me out over the phone again and promised to beat me in the sports festival. That last one was just business of usual. But at least he had something to look forward to after school today. And the school itself was obviously awesome. He still forgot that he was going to UA sometimes and every time he remembered it brought a burst of joy to his heart. You know, I never knew what people meant when they called someone a precious cinnamon roll but after meeting you, I think I get it. And a compliment from Emiya. Could the day get any better? Izuku thought. Not picking up on Emiya's teasing. Hours later, UA ground alpha. Classes for UA had thankfully been made relatively easier in preparation for the sports festival. It was a small mercy that allowed the students to train themselves for the event. The classes themselves were aimed at practical hero training much more than normal. Even the mathematics class with Cementos was turned into a practical exercise. Izuku now knew more about the aerodynamics and physics of artillery than he ever thought he needed. But now wasn't the time to reminisce. Now was the time to talk shop with his new friends. Sure he wasn't a professional quirk analyst but this was his passion for well over a decade now. Izuku felt that he knew what he was talking about when it came to society's superpowers. Wait, you mean there's more than three categories for quirks? The same could not be said for his new friends. It would seem that he'd need to educate them on proper quirk categorization. Not that half-assed, inaccurate classification system the government used and hasn't changed in decades. Yes, there are quite a few categories along with subcategories for most and a robust amount of terms used to describe various quirks. I won't go over them all right now since there are so many but I can send you all a link to the wiki when we finish for today. I can go over each of your quirks and categorize them though, just to show you how comprehensive the system can be. This was the culmination of multiple generations worth of quirk nerds and actual data analysts working together to properly categorize every quirk under the sun. After all, how else would you argue with random people online about semantics without sharing common jargon? Starting with Ida since his quirk is the simplest. His family engine quirk falls under the category of mover and the subcategory of propulsion. Overall it has the archetype of speedster with a tier rating of a C from what I could see of your overall physical ability. Izuku blasted off, not noticing how his friends began to buffer from the info dump he just gave. Yuraraka is a shaker, striker variant, with the subcategory of levitation. The gravity archetype fits best. Quite a powerful one. I haven't gotten a good look at your abilities but your quirks limit is well within the B range. I'd guess your weight limit was about 3 tons. Achako slowly nodded while smiling, barely keeping up with what was said. Momo on the other hand finally caught up and was paying close attention to what Izuku was saying especially now that the information concerned her. Finally there's Yeyurazu. I'll be honest there aren't many quirks similar to yours, at least not with its sheer versatility. 
Mine comes close but it's so different at the same time that comparing the two would just be ridiculous. We both created things from something. And that's about where the similarities ended. Funnily enough it falls under the archetype of creation quirks, the category of physical and the subcategory biological since you need lipids to create things. But it's easily an S-ranked quirk if used correctly, right up there with All Might's quirk. And his own quirk Izuku supposed though he'd rather not say that. Okay, I think I know how we can discuss our quirks most efficiently. Each of us can describe one aspect of it at a time, discuss how it can be used or improved for hero work, and discuss possible weaknesses that could be corrected. Is this acceptable? Leave it to Ida to seek the most efficient yet equitable way of doing things. Not like they had a problem with it, they all agreed. Izuku was still a bit unsure about how much he should tell his friends about his quirk, but he'd never get anywhere if he wasn't willing to take such a small risk. I guess I should start since everyone's been asking for details. So, how much do you all know about gacha games? Izuku could practically see the question marks over their heads. Oh boy, this was going to take a while. Turning money into quirks and selling magic items for chump change. Move my head needs to stop spin and give me a sec. Yuraka had never heard of such bullshit before and it sent her through a loop, so much so that she even temporarily went back into her native Kansai dialect. In fairness, Yeyorazu and Ida were in a similar mental state but for slightly different reason. A quirk that encourages gambling and reckless action. T then again it also rewards heroic actions and self-improvement. I find myself conflicted, please give me a moment. The practical, ethical, and straight-laced parts of Ida's mind were arguing with each other in circles. Yeyorazu however, that is such a horribly broken and over-the-top quirk and I love every part of it. To have a veritable armory of history's greatest weapons, stories, and even heroic figures for such a low price. I apologize Midoriya Kun but I'm rather envious of you. And she thought her quirk was somewhat overpowered. What her classmate and new friend's quirk though had the potential to make even All Might's quirk seem weak in comparison. Little did she know. And maybe I should have broken down the explanation into smaller chunks. Can we please move on from the absurdity of how my quirk operates and focus on what can be done with it for now? Izuku was slightly disturbed that they all focused on the monetary and gambling aspects of his quirk beyond anything else but was willing to look past that for the sake of everyone's sanity. For the sake of training why don't you all spar with some of my transformations? I'll use a different one each time to simulate the variety you'd find during the sports festival, Izuku suggested, unintentionally asserting that he not only had a quirk just as if not more versatile than hundreds of others, but that he had full confidence in himself being able to fight on par and defeat three of his classmates at the same time. If it were anyone else, the three students would have called them out on their arrogance and proceeded to make them eat their words. But with Izuku, the way he said it was so genuine and filled with an earnest want to help others that whatever annoyance or offense his friends might have felt vanished faster than inside characters' relevance to their story. Instead, they just felt their competitive flames swell up at the challenge. An excellent idea Midoriya Kun. We should find a teacher at once to follow proper protocol. Ah, uh, there's one right there. He ever by the books Ida said while pointing out a wild Tashinori that was just minding his own business. He totally wasn't keeping an eye on his successor like a worried father. That would be ridiculous. But ah, hello young ones. My name is Yagi Tashinori. And while I'm not a teacher I can indeed authorize spars between students. From what I heard can I assume that it will be a three against one situation? In that case, the first student to land a clean hit or that causes their opponent to fall wins. The emaciated All Might was a bit caught off guard but rolled with it anyway. Thank you, sir. Now, Midoriya Kun, do you need some time to prepare or can you just before the young human motorcycle could even finish his sentence? Izuku had already installed a card, one which he had never shown before and one that certainly captured the attention of everyone present. It was a form that almost screamed reliable buff uncle. His chest was bare, filled with rippling muscles that were noticeably bigger than what Izuku's regular body would have usually had. Three large scars marred his chest, seemingly given by a large cat or perhaps a bear. And while his hair gained a shade of purple and his pants changed to a different design, the most striking piece was the massive blade he held that looked more like a gigantic drill than a sword. Overall, Izuku's latest install had the greatest levels of big dick energy yet seen, a quality that Fergus Macroich's legend surely helped with. This card is a great all-rounder that mostly deals with raw parameters. Come at me all at once and don't be afraid to go all out. They wouldn't even land a hit if they didn't, especially with Fergus' arguably most useful skill, playing the passive game. Very well, I guess I'll have to go on the offensive. Eye of the mind day, eh? Izuku exclaimed, misunderstanding his classmate's stunned state as a wait-and-see strategy. Whether he knew it or not, Izuku's new confidence and aggressive action were partially thanks to Fergus' own battle style, a style that favored an overwhelming attack. And now, Valerie, Izuku exclaimed once again as he swung a fist towards the now-panicking Ada. 
his skill allowing the green, purple-haired warrior to let go of his mental restrictions, raising his offensive power significantly. Gah, Ada very nearly fell on his own from the surprise of being charged so suddenly, and at speeds that were only slightly lower than his own. He would have gotten hit into a small crater as well if it weren't for a timely block by Yeyarazu and her freshly made shield and even with that the force of the impact was enough to send Yeyarazu's students flying backward into a wall, only stopping safely thanks to Yeyarazu's creation of a cushion right before they made impact. Did I use too much strength? I'm sorry. I didn't expect you to just stand there like that. Are you okay? Izuku asked in worry, though his earlier skill helped him avoid a sneak attack from behind by Yuraka who took the only chance she thought she had to touch her opponent. Ah, it was a ruse to make me drop my guard. Good try but you'll need to do better than that. Despair was briefly seen on Yuraka's face as her hands were caught by the wrist by Izuku who hadn't even looked back to do so, only to have the despair replaced with wide-eyed fear as she was thrown over Izuku's shoulder in the same direction that her classmates landed moments before. Thankfully, Yeyurazu had just enough time to reorient herself to prepare another cushion to limit Yuraka's impact. Good save yeyurazu san since none of you hit the ground that means you're all still in this. Izuku complimented with a smile, his narrowed eyes hiding his usually brilliant emerald eyes which gave his look a certain menacing edge to it. Still, survival isn't the same as a victory, get ready. Now thoroughly scared and aware of the green hero's newest transformation and aggression, the three students quickly took battle stances and prepared themselves for his next assault. This time I won't hold back as much, he exclaimed as he lifted Kalidbalg over his head. He was holding back. They thought simultaneously with roughly equal levels of horror. A level that shot up to the max the moment that the weirdly shaped weapon Izuku wielded hit the ground and caused a miniature earthquake to the surrounding area while also sending a veritable wave of concrete towards the three momentarily stunned hero students. Iraraka grab us. Not having the time to be polite Yeyarazu skipped out on the honorifics as she formed the only solution to their current problem she could think of on short notice. A miniature trampoline. Thankfully, Yuraka quickly deduced what the plan was and jumped on while dragging a weightless Yeyarazu and it along with her, using the fresh creation to launch them into the air quickly enough to dodge the incoming wave. The trampoline however wasn't so lucky. It shall be missed. HRK, sorry guys I'm at my L limit. Our release. Yuraka apologized. The combination of using her quirk on herself, two other people, mixed with the sudden earthquake and acrobatics were simply too much for the poor girl to handle for very long. I'll distract him. Recipro burst. Though it pained Ida to admit, his one and only super move was likely to only do that, cause a temporary distraction and maybe, just maybe, stall his monstrous class president for just long enough to give his teammates a chance to come up with something. With the help of gravity and his special move, Ada was propelled at intense speeds towards Izuku, who if it weren't for his B-ranked agility and eye of the mind skill would have taken the full-powered kick right to the chest. Instead, Izuku managed to block the head at the very last second using Kalidbalg though he was still sent back a few feet from the force of the impact, not dealing much damage, but certainly distracting Izuku for a few moments. Ada on the other hand wasn't so lucky. He hit his target sure, but his body wasn't used to that kind of force, especially not when he was kicking the energy equivalent of a mountain compressed to the size of a human. His foot fractured on impact and the bones in his legs went soon after, leading to him clutching at his injury which luckily served to further distract Izuku. H hey, are you alright? The swordsman said in worry, barely noticing the distinct clinking noise of metal hitting concrete underneath him. Nene, he said just as the couple of metal canisters that landed underneath him exploded, blasting colored smoke right into his face. A chemical attack, he thought, already feeling a bit woozy without needing to breathe in. D-damn, it must be some kind of highly concentrated sedative mixed with some type of gaseous acid. And since it's a poison, I need to end this quickly. Nature of a rebellious spirit B. The skill wouldn't help with the poisoning, but at least it cleared his mind and gave him a second wind of sorts. It was just enough for one final push against his remaining opponents. Oh come on. Izuku wasn't sure who it was that said that. He was too busy punching yet another shield created by Yeyarazu. Screw it he thought, bypassing the shield entirely. He utilized his shorter height by crouching under Yeyurazu's arm and landed a standing lariat, relying on his strength rather than momentum to push the creation user into the ground. Two down. Now I just have to take out Yurara. He felt a pair of arms wrap around his waist from behind. Oh no. He thought as a sudden yanking sensation lead to a feeling of weightlessness, vertigo, and eventually a heavy impact to his head, which while not particularly damaging did mean that he was technically knocked down. He just didn't expect that a German suplex from Yuraka was how he'd go down. Why you know, this is an effective move and all, but can you please let go of my why Izuku began to say, blushing slightly before the gas created by Yeyurazu finally kicked in sending him to Morpheus realm. 
blushing slightly at Izuku's last words. Yuraka let go after she realized that he was down for the count and then did a quick checkup on her teammates. She was pretty sure legs weren't supposed to bend like that. And Yeyazaru looked like she was having problems breathing, which made sense considering how hard she hit the ground. Wait a minute, where was that faculty member? What was his name again? She thought. Yagi-san, Yuraka called out. Only for someone who definitely wasn't Tashinori Yagi to respond. Fear not young Yuraka. I was nearby when you began sparring with young Midoriya. I shall get you all to recovery girl as quickly as possible. Starting with young Yeyurazu and Ida who seemed to have a minor concussion and several broken bones respectively. Please hold tight. I will only be gone for a moment. Totally not Tashinori trying to reassure Yuraka while carefully picking up the injured hero students. Trying his best not to jostle them and aggravate their injuries. Midoriya Kun. Even after all that you were holding back this whole time weren't you? If he hadn't, if he utilized every card hidden in his sleeves, hundreds if he were to be believed, then she, Yairazu, and Ida wouldn't have stood a chance, even holding back as he was they only barely won by a technicality. And Yamomo had to break out the chemical weaponry to do it. Note to self, don't piss her off. Actually, note to self, don't piss off any of my classmates if I can help it. Yuraka amended in her head. She could only hope that by the end of the year, or at least the hero course, her own name would be on other people's list of those they shouldn't mess with. But for now, she'd settle for the not insignificant amount of pride she felt for being part of this small victory. It was almost enough to settle the unholy levels of nausea she felt after the fight. BLRGH. Almost. One hour later, teachers meeting. It would seem that some of our students have gotten a bit overly excited about the upcoming sports festival and hurt themselves while training. Tashinori Kun was there in person to see what happened, please explain. Nezu began the meeting by putting totally no All Might on the spot. The skeletal hero gave a bloody cough before starting. He was already kicking himself for letting the sparing match go as far as it did. He was just thankful that nobody was permanently injured and that there were no hard feelings. It began when I found young Midoriya, Ida, Yuraka, and Yeyurazu, who happened to be training with each other for the upcoming festival and decided to spar. They asked me for permission first of course, even though they didn't recognize me in this form, and I approved it. I just never expected it to go that far. He got too invested in watching the fight and only went into action after Izuku lost. Sue him he was impressed by his students' progress. Please don't actually sue though. His lawyers already had a lot of work as it stood. So you let four teenagers who have only had a single day of combat training. That you skipped the basics of I might add, fight against each other and didn't stop the fight immediately when you saw one of them break every bone in their leg. Aizawa drawled, disbelieving at the level of recklessness displayed by his newest colleague. They charke. In fairness, I knew that young Midoriya had healing capabilities so I thought a little physical damage was acceptable. I just didn't expect for him to actually lose. He admitted. Sometimes he forgot that while incredibly skilled and powerful for his age, Izuku was still largely inexperienced with combat. You meet head. Just because someone can heal, which I'll be speaking to Midoriya Kun about later, doesn't mean that you should let these kinds of injuries happen in the first place. You of all people should know that not all injuries can be fully healed. It was a low blow from Recovery Girl but a necessary one. She needed to remind him that even he wasn't invincible, much less his students. Another glob of blood from the skeleton man. Tashinori Kun's inexperience and future education aside, I believe we should discuss the growth and development of Midoriya San's quirk. Didn't I ask to be updated whenever he gained a new ability? Aizawa Kun didn't you receive a full report from Midoriya Kun Nezu asked the clearly tired man. Even more tired than usual if the triple bags under his eyes were anything to go by. Ugh, in a way yes. A full, 200-page report that finished up by saying that it was effectively useless. Midoriya's quirk is basically a grab bag of quirks that he can gain and sell away at will. Literally so mind you, for pocket change. Aizawa exclaimed, nearly losing his mind. He sighed deeply before continuing. By the nature of his quirk, it is impossible to say exactly what he can and can't do in real time. He promised to update his notes whenever he adds a new ability but this is obviously not a perfect system. Today's incident made that obvious, but it was the best they had at the moment. I suppose that it will have to do for now. We can come up with a better one once the sports festival is over. Speaking of which, does anyone have any concerns that they wish to voice? Every occupant in the room rose their hand in unison. Oh my, it was going to be a long day it would seem. You ugh, what happened to me? Oh right, while well, those guys are strong. In their own way of course, physically speaking his class cards were too much for most people, but his classmates had found a way to bypass his strength and durability for the win. Alright, next time I'll let myself switch cards mid-fight, and maybe use craft essences too. It's good to see that your new power isn't going to your head, or giving you any unhealthy pride for that matter. And you have far more restraint than Tashinori which is always a positive. How are you feeling, young man? 
Izuku heard a gentle, elderly voice from his side. He turned to see Recovery Girl sitting by a desk doing paperwork. After a few seconds of awkward silence, Izuku realized that he was asked a question and gave his honest answer. A little groggy I guess, but nothing hurts and I feel like I could walk and even run around just fine after a bit of water and some stretching. In all honesty, it felt more like he just woke up with mild dehydration rather than the injuries he should have had from a spar that left him unconscious. HM, I'll go get you some. I suppose we should also add a minor healing factor to the grab bag of powers your quirk gives you. It clearly wasn't a poison resistance since he was still knocked out by the gas. Whatever it was merely knocked it out of his system faster than usual, how curious. The elderly nurse contemplated her patient's strange quirk while handing him a cup of water. Thank you, and how are the others by the way? I hope that I didn't hurt them too badly. Sometimes the personalities of my cards can get a bit carried away. Granted his classmates injuries were mostly self-inflicted ones, especially Ida Kun. I don't like the sound he made on impact. Oh, they'll be fine. Yuraka just had a moderate case of nausea that cleared up on its own. Yeyarazu woke up shortly after the fight and only had a headache with no signs of any deeper damage. HM, I even mentioned that she'd only need some over-the-counter painkillers and the girl just made some herself, such a convenient quirk. Of course, the elder nurse quizzed her on the chemical makeup of the drugs to make sure she got them right. A test which the Ravenet passed with flying colors. A young Ada was in a worse state. His foot had several broken bones, and his femur had a comminuted fracture but it was nothing I couldn't fix with my quirk. A few kisses, gummies, and a power nap later and he was ready to leave before the day was done. It helped that the boy was highly disciplined and energetic from the start. That's good to hear. Thank you recovery girl. Izuku's genuine gratitude brought a smile to the small lady's face which she hid quickly. She still felt that warm fuzzy feeling whenever she got a genuine thank you like that. It happened less and less often the longer her career went but it was always refreshing to hear. Of course, now run along young man. I'm sure that you have better things to do than staying in bed all day. Like explaining to your mother why you ended up unconscious from what should have been a friendly spar. All color was lost from Izuku's face at that moment. Worse yet, it wasn't just his mother, who was terrifying enough, that he would have to explain things to. Midori your residence, that night, and furthermore you should have used a weaker, but more versatile servant card in order to give your friends a better challenge while minimizing the amount of damage you would have dealt. Perhaps Lina does. Emiya continued his almost non-stop rant of what Izuku should have done during his spar with his classmates. Having started immediately after they left the school and only petered out when Izuku told his mother what happened. Surprisingly Inko was far less critical about the situation. She was worried at first of course, but after noticing that her son had no visible injuries and appeared to be perfectly fine she calmed down. More than anything she seemed interested and proud of her son's new abilities which he told her about over dinner. And I passed out after that. It was a little embarrassing actually. Izuku ended his story by telling his mother that the battle ended with a girl's arms wrapped around his waist. Maybe I should have cut that part out. I definitely should have let that part out. The green hero thought when he saw the frankly worrying look on his mother's face. Ara Ara, Izuku is finally going through his popular phase. How nice. I hope I get to meet his new friends sometime soon. The woman said in a low voice, almost forgetting that Izuku was even there. Izuku took this moment to make a strategic retreat and leave his mother to her trance-like state. Opening the door to his room Izuku noticed that the bounded field that transformed it into a training ground was already up, with Medea waiting for him inside. That's right, I never dispelled her since yesterday. Have I gotten to the point where a single three-star servant doesn't tax me much? Oh good. Operation, grandparent thoughts was a success, so Inko's excessive reaction from earlier was partially Medea's fault then. That both reassured and worried Izuku on different levels. Don't worry, I merely enhanced the thoughts that were already there and basically made her daydream for long enough to overlook our next training session. She should come back to her senses in a few hours. Okay, so less worrying but still pretty scary that Medea would just do that without even asking. Still, Izuku guessed that this training she spoke of was pretty important and would be better done sooner rather than later. I just hope that I'll stay awake for this one. Even if it was in the safety of his mind, Izuku cursed himself for jinxing it. Simply put, while you have obtained a passable skill using your class cards, you are still limited by your stamina. Additionally, that quirk of yours is more of a hindrance right now than a benefit in combat. So first and foremost, we will be training your endurance, your reinforcement magecraft, and we will be pushing your usage of one for all to its very limit continuously. I suggest that you grit your teeth and don't loosen them until the day is done. Izuku did not squeak in fear. Not at all. Though he would not deny that he let out a few tears of apprehension. Many days of horrific screams of pain, stress, frustration, and triumph later. I can't feel my anything. So why am I still in pain? Is my soul hurting? Was this what soul pain felt like? Close enough, a living soul is a mixture of one's body, mind, and magic. 
You've exhausted all of the above so it wouldn't be untrue to say that you've strained your soul. Izuku meant that as a joke but he was glad to hear that what he was feeling wasn't permanent or truly damaging. He just had the world's worst case of after-workout exhaustion, a fact that made it very difficult to pay attention in class. Thankfully, his marks were already well at the top of his class so his grades wouldn't suffer too much. Right now, he was just enjoying his lunch break. Yo, you okay Midoriya? You look like you died, got revived in another world, and then immediately died again and got brought back to the old broken body. Moinda asked, making an oddly specific but not exaggerated summation of how the green hero felt. By the way, I've wanted to ask this question for a while now. Do you dot 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 you know? Lose a part of yourself whenever you use a girl servant card. Of course, that was what he would ask. L lots of training. Everything hurts. And no, I k kinda just get different facial features and have my skeletal structure change slightly. Male servants are a little different though. Their bodies are more compatible so I gain more of their traits. If he used Emiya his skin got a little darker. If he used Darius or Fergus he got a bit bulkier, etc. Guess we can add minor shapeshifting to the list of things your quirk can do. Anything else we should know before the sports festival starts. Kaminari didn't care for subtlety and asked flat out. Immediately afterward, both Todoroki and Bakugo decided to leave their tables and move towards opposite sides of the cafeteria. Those two might not want to hear it but the rest of us need everything we can get. Uh, apparently, I can heal fairly quickly. Not fast enough to be useful in combat though. Izuku tossed them a bone, not having the mental energy to argue or think about it too much. Stamina's a limit too. If I work myself too hard then everything else kinda just shuts down. Sure he could use his craft essences in an emergency but he'd rather not waste them. Sorry, Izuku-kun. I forgot to mention that you shouldn't use that method of stamina recovery more than once a day. It may or may not cause local multiversal collapse, time paradoxes, total organ failure, or spontaneous spiritual combustion. Thank the various universal beings that Izuku was stingy with his quartz and didn't try to abuse the stamina recovery method. Something about that pale face tells me there's a catch with that. But I'll let you keep your secrets Midori-kun. Mina said at the exact moment that All Might showed up wearing a business suit and holding a comically small lunchbox. Ahaha, young Midoriya is here. I've been looking for you. Wanna eat lunch with me? The pose he took instantly caused those close to him to take out their phones and snap a few photos. Only hours later a new meme was born, Domestic All Might, would flood the internet for years to come. Uh, sure sensei. Just give me a second. Standing hurts. So did walking, or moving in general really. Breathing was a bit uncomfortable too now that he thought about it. Alright, here we go. I'm ready, see you guys later. He said apologetically to his classmates before joining his teacher. Meeting in the nearby teacher's lounge the two sat down and opened up their lunch. It's good to speak with you again sensei, did you need something? Not that I don't enjoy just eating lunch with you of course, he asked, quickly apologizing for his self-perceived slight. This really was a dream come true for him though, not just meeting All Might, but becoming his student and hanging out with the man too. Haha, <laughs> of course, young Midoriya. Honestly, I just thought that we've both been busy for a while now and haven't had the opportunity to really talk since you got into UA. I see that you've developed your quirks quite well since then. More so the gacha power than one for all. But All Might understood that one would come more naturally while the other was a foreign power. I am trying, and I guess things are getting better, at the cost of everything hurting. All Might chuckled at Izuku's plight, knowing very well what overdoing it after working out felt like, or the feeling of exhaustion after a long, drawn-out battle. I guess this is just something I'll have to get used to from now on. Just don't forget to rest properly, young Midoriya. Don't make the same mistakes that I did in my youth. You're making remarkable progress as it is, and there's no need to rush things. You will get your chance to prove yourself soon. In fact, I think you should take tomorrow to take a breather for the sports festival the next day. The veteran hero suggested to his protege. Emiya, thoughts. He's got a point. This is about as strong as you're going to be for now. Take tomorrow to think up tactics for this festival of yours. With the blessing of the voice in his head. Izuku nodded, accepting All Might's advice and planning to take it easy until the festival. Good. The sports festival will be your first chance to really get your name out there in a big way. It will be your chance to tell the world that you are here. No pressure of course. You'll get three shots throughout your time at UA so don't sweat it if you don't do too well. Not that I don't think you All Might caught himself several times, growing embarrassed by how he made it sound. I I get it sensei, I'll try my best. And at the same time, I won't pull my hair out over it all. I'm fairly confident that I'll be able to do well anyways. The problem comes with trying to stand out amongst the crowd, which if Izuku was being honest with himself, would be fairly easy considering his unique abilities and strength. A large variety of badass entrances were already being played out in his mind. By the way, since my quirk can create gear, do I need to make an application form for each one, or do they just count as part of my quirk? Izuku was prepared to thank the heavens when All Might confirmed the latter. 
At least he didn't have to deal with the insane amount of paperwork the former would entail. Just try to keep the collateral damage to a minimum, please. I know that you usually have a tight lid on your power, but some of your other personalities though. Right. It would probably be for the best if Izuku did not use any servants with particularly destructive powers or overly aggressive personalities during the festival. Depending on his opponents of course, All Might took a final sip from his tea drink and sighed before standing. Alright, we should get going. This was nice though, we should do this more often, until next time young Midoriya. The injured hero stood up and went to deal with his responsibilities. Izuku followed suit soon after. Now that he had no plans to train for the next couple of days Izuku needed something to fill up the free time. Midoriya, good, I needed to talk to you. Since you scored first in the entrance exam you'll need to give the athletes oath during the sports festival and give a speech. Good luck with that. Don't bother asking me for help, by the way. We both know I'm no good with this kind of stuff. Hum, it would seem that Aizawa could read minds and had perfect comedic timing. Izuku took several seconds to realize what just happened. Panic began to set in soon after. He still had one ray of hope however. I second what the hobo said. You're on your own kid. Hope extinguished. Full panic mode initiated. Master, it's just a speech to be made in front of children. Honestly, you're the type to face monsters rivaling those of legend without flinching. Yet something this mundane frightens you. Medea teased her master, student while he paced back and forth through their training field. I'd almost call it pathetic if it weren't so cute. Sometimes I forget that my master is still a child. Oh lay off Medea. We all have our quirks, no pun intended. And while I don't share the boy's fear of public speaking, I wouldn't be thrilled about speaking in front of thousands while millions more watched. Especially not for something like that festival. The whole thing rubs me the wrong way. The silver-haired counter-guardian spoke up from his resting place, a random boulder in their training field. W what do you mean Emiya-san? It's just a class sports festival, even if it's a huge one since it's UA. The school never did anything low-key. The young gacha player didn't think Nezu even knew the meaning of restraint. The whole thing is an insult to what heroes are meant to be. It places children into a televised blood sport. And don't even try to deny it Izuku, I can see your memories and giant robots known for exploding won't help your case. Anyways, it pits heroes against each other for the sake of showing off their strength to the world, or more accurately, to hero agencies and merchandising firms. He took a breath, fist clenched as he thought about it. Heroes save others, that is their ultimate purpose, anything else is secondary. But this festival has nothing to do with saving others. It's a superficial competition. Meant to rack up attention, funding, and to promote the ever-increasing commercialization of heroics in the modern era. At best, it gives the public a false sense of security and some temporary entertainment, while also giving the villains invaluable information on their future enemies. It was wasteful, almost completely unaligned with heroism, and tactically detrimental to future heroes. Crack, my apologies, I seem to have lost my temper. Emmy apologized for the damage he caused to their training field. His resting spot cracked and exploded from the servant's momentary release of prana. You can take this as a sign that your power is improving. Even a top-class modern mage from my world couldn't supply me with this much power. It was too bad that all that odd that his master possessed didn't translate to prana, Izuku's fresh circuits just couldn't handle it. I, I never really thought about it that way. I can see your point but at this point, there's not much that anyone can do other than. Izuku fell into deep thought, inspiration slowly brewing in his mind thanks to his servant and friend. I think I have an idea for the speech I need to give, even if I'm afraid there's something that needs to be said to the world. And luckily, while he had no cure for his own nerves, there was a certain skill that some servants had that would be particularly useful for giving speeches. Next day, Class 1A Waiting Room. Midoriya, speaking objectively, you're stronger than us, more capable, more versatile. And it seems that you have All Might's attention for some reason. I don't want to pry into that but just know that I will beat you. The candy cane member of class 1A said, shocking many but mostly earning himself blank stares. Dude, be realistic. Sure you're strong, probably the second strongest student in our class, but Midoriya's quirk is just busted. Complicated but busted, I know I'd probably be nowhere near as good with it. Kaminari spoke up, saying what many were thinking. The half and half hero did not expect to be called out. In fact, he was so caught off guard that he had nothing else to say, choosing to leave the room before their class was even called. Well that was awkward. I wanted to make a rebuttal but completely forgot that guy's name. He should probably work on that. In his defense, it's been a busy week. Why do I feel like even when he says nothing I'm being insulted somehow? Kaminari deflated like a certain other blonde, eyes shadowing over at the instinctual knowledge that his pride had been struck. But it's not like I'm wrong, even if guys like him and Bakugo don't want to admit it. And with a grand total of four and a half sentences, Kaminari was able to make two of the more powerful students in his class retreat from the verbal battlefield. Though the explosive blonde gave a certain gesture before leaving. 
and with him, I can't tell if he's being particularly insulting, or just acting the way he usually does. Why are all the strong people in this class so weird? And not that I find you weird Midoriya. Midoriya. The electric blonde questioned, turning to see that the green-haired boy wasn't paying attention at all. He's been like this since we got here. I think he's worried about representing the first years and the athlete's oath he has to give. I took a look in the notebook that he keeps writing in but that thing appears and disappears so fast that I keep wondering how it doesn't catch on fire. Hagakure answered, amused by her classmate's antics. He mentioned that he could use his material alteration ability to write things at the speed of thought and without a writing tool. The disappearing part is new however, perhaps he's developed some kind of pocket dimension. I'll admit it's difficult to keep up with what our president can and cannot do. Ida added, deciding to snap his fingers in front of Izuku to bring him back to Earth. Ah, uh, sorry, I was lost in thought. Did you need something, Ida? What happened to Kakin and distant present Mike yelling well? That's our cue, sorry guess we'll have to talk later. His classmates still looked concerned but accepted that they needed to get moving before they were late. I wonder what Midoriya has planned. It isn't like him to be this. Actually, it's exactly like him to be this hyper-focused and nervous. I suppose speaking in front of so many people only made it worse. It's the kind of thing that would give anyone anxiety. Ada muttered as he and his class moved outside. Uraraka and Yeyarazu silently agreed as they nervously looked at their green friend, feeling that he was still in his own head even as they walked towards the arena. Okay, I got it. I just wish that the other students weren't so hostile from the start. Did Kakin do something to piss them off? Stupid question. Izuku muttered as he made his way up to the stands on orders from midnight. Taking a quick cleansing breath he installed the kid Gilgamesh card and immediately knew why Emiya warned him against it. His eyes went crimson. His face lost a few years, the muscle he developed not disappearing, but more smoothing out, similar to how his female cards made Izuku slightly more feminine. This one gave him a bit of a baby face, even more so than he usually had. Along with it came a sense of innocent authority, an overpowering charisma that forced those that saw him directly to silence themselves. Now is the time that we as UA students showcase our talent as future heroes. Whether it's us who earned our place in the hero course, those in Gen Ed who wish to be among the heroes, the support course who earn their title of hero by helping the world through science, or even the business course which helps the heroes financially. He began his mini-speech by addressing each of the classes represented in the sports festival as equals, even those not directly participating, instantly earning him some respect from said classes. We have all come together today to show the people of Japan, no, the world just what the next generation can do, whether they be the civilians that we protect, the old guard that protected them before us, the scientists, and businessmen that help them do just that. And yes, even the villains, my message today is different for each but I will give it in the same way. I firmly believe that actions speak louder than words so. Izuku, Gil paused for dramatic effect. Just watch me. Silence. Complete and utter silence followed after Izuku's final words. It remained as he walked down to rejoin his class, and it took until he finally made it down for the stadium's explosive roar to take over. The sound was so loud that Izuku guessed that it rivaled even Bakugo's point-blank explosion. There you go. That should be enough to get your point across master. Just try not to combust when you uninstall me. Gilgamesh's ego, even diminished as it was through a class card, bled through into Izuku's thoughts. Though he wasn't wrong, the moment he uninstalled the card he felt a sense of vertigo so intense that he nearly fell over. Thankfully, his friends weren't stunned enough to let him fall. Are you alright Midoriya? That was quite an intense speech. If what I felt is any indication I can't even imagine having to give such a speech myself. And with such passion, I didn't know that you had such a talent for public speaking. I really de don't. I k kinda cheated by using a card with a robust personality. A king actually. I have to be careful because cards like that are so mentally different from my own mind that they can have long-term effects. Izuku replied in a shaky voice, still recovering from Gilgamesh's stunt. I see, though you shouldn't consider such a thing cheating. Quirks are a part of us and using them to improve the work we do is just common sense for heroes, or even for most professionals so long as their use is regulated or unnoticeable. Ida hesitated before saying the last part, uncomfortable with acknowledging how common breaking quirk laws was but knowing that most places didn't care so long as it didn't cause any trouble. I I guess you're right. I never really thought of it like that. For all of his love of quirks and heroics, Izuku himself never grew up with one. Even to this day he sometimes forgets how ubiquitous quirks are in everyday life and not just in heroics. Thank you, Ida-kun. If you ever have such doubts, never forget what you've accomplished so far and that we are always here if you even need a friend to talk to Midoriya Kun. What kind of heroes or even friends would we be if we couldn't at least do that? Uraraka tried to reassure Izuku. She and Yeyarazu placed a hand on his shoulders in support. 
For the first time in a long time, the young counter guardian's eyes began to tear up, feeling the genuine care and concern of true friends for what felt like the first time. I really am too lucky, he muttered, wiping away the moisture from his eyes. Thank you. I mean it guys that means more to me than you know. To start things off we have a battle of wits. Out of the hundreds of students, only 50 will remain. The first challenge is the Riddler's Maze. The 18 plus umpire's voice was followed by a rumbling from the ground. Over the course of a minute, many multi-story walls were raised up by some kind of mechanism, a gigantic maze taking form as they did. The rules are simple. There are ten entrances into the maze, each with its own challenges and puzzles to solve. However, none were created equal. They are numbers 1 to 10. The higher the number, the more difficult the maze, and the better the reward. Midnight began her explanation. Digital screens turning on to indicate each entrance's number and point reward. 100, 200, 4, and so on up until the 10th gate which was worth over 50,000 points. You can go about it however you wish. Enter alone and brave the maze, keeping all the points for yourself. Or you can team up with other students to make it easier at the cost of dividing your points equally. Keep in mind that each maze also has a few surprises that may manipulate your points so watch out for those. And as a final rule, destruction of the maze walls is prohibited. Other than that, go wild. You have 10 minutes to plan things out. She finished her explanation and proceeded to switch channels on her mic to gossip with her co-workers. This year's festival was proving to be very interesting. Without thinking twice Izuku walked towards the tenth gate and sat down, making a mental list of what he could use to make this game a little easier. Emiya is the obvious choice. I could just structural grasp the maze and get the history of it. From their beating it should be child's play. Should being the keyword here. I can barely get anything out of this thing. I have the general layout of the maze and I can see a few moving gears here and there but everything else is just a blank. An idea passed Izuku's mind. He dropped out of his Emiya card to test it and was surprised to see that his vision actually improved. Wiring. A veritable mountain of electrical wiring, don't tell me. Digital traps and puzzles. Possibly hard light constructs too. Knowing you eh, they may even have virtual reality gear ready for you. They must have studied my abilities knowing that you favored them which probably meant that every other maze also had a few digital puzzles, even if they weren't the main obstacle. They were trying their best to keep his quirk in check. Midoriya Kun, I see that you've chosen to go down the most difficult path. Still, even the greatest of heroes work in teams, will you have us? Ida asked. Hiroraka, Yeyurazu, and surprisingly Kaminari followed along, also wanting to join the dream team. I saw three of my smartest classmates and the most powerful student in the hero course in one team. Trying my luck and joining in just looked like a no-brainer. Fair enough. And Izuku was quick to reveal that the electric boy's powers would be pretty useful considering the nature of their gate's challenges. Sweet. I love video games. At least I hope that they include video games. I'm pretty terrible at puzzle games though, so I'll leave those to the class smarties. Kaminari said in excitement. And pride aside, Yuraka had to agree. She wasn't bad in the book smarts department or anything, but she knew that her best friends were out of her league. I guess we're a team, let's plan this out. Here, I'll give each of you a short list of my powers that might prove useful here. We have five minutes, which should be enough time to read through them. His friend's smiles wavered and morphed when Izuku showed his short list, a veritable essay of bulleted points, obscure limitations, and even stamina costs written in surprisingly clean script for something written in under five seconds. Yeyorazu didn't even blink. She simply started reading through her notes at a frightening speed. Ada's face grew serious but overall he didn't seem bothered by the idea. As for the other two, read, I can barely skim this thing in just five minutes. Sorry if it comes off as a bit of a ramble. Those notes are written directly from my thoughts. If you want the cliff notes I have them here. Izuku added, pulling out a notepad that was filled in the traditional way, a much shorter list of powers written inside. We're saved. The unlikely pair thought in unison, gratefully taking the condensed notes and hoping that it would be enough to keep up. Something tells me that Principal Nezu had a personal hand in making this maze. If so then he probably read through the notes that I gave Aizawa. This is probably going to be the most difficult puzzle of my life. The young hero thought in apprehension. But now, I have a great team to help me with it. I think we got this. Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.